Come on, Annie. Let's go to the movies. This is the Cine Realist, episode 509. My name is Kyle. My name is James. And my name is Zach. And we're here to talk about movies, movie lists, and movie obsession for the next hour or so. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks. Good to be here. Yeah. It's great to be here. I'm excited. <laughs> you sound very <laughs> enthused, James. Honestly, I haven't. I Yeah, I mean, I'm maybe my uh, energy level doesn't match my uh, enthusiasm for the discussion today. I actually... I uh, can't wait to talk to you guys about the movie we saw this week. I'm, I'm very, ex- I'm very excited. Before we get to that, though, I need to address something. Okay, uh, Zach, for people watching the YouTube video, <laughs> you look very comfortable right now. <laughs> I assure you, I'm not as comfortable as I look. Okay. Um, he's he's addressing the fact that I'm on my bed right now, surrounded by pillows, <laughs> which is which is true. It's good in theory, but but you, I can't. I can't lean back because I have these Christmas lights here. And if I lean back, they fall on me. But you have like the tinsel, the Christmas lights. There's a, a picture of you and your wife on your wedding day in the corner. <laughs> like this is this is a much yeah. better background than what you've been doing for That's very the homey. rest of the show. I'm I'm in a festive mood. Uh, and I just I wanted to bring a little Christmas to the show. I, I noticed that neither of you have decorated your backgrounds at all for Christmas. No. I have. In fact, James, your background is worse than normal. What do you mean worse than you, normal? Well, you lost one of the three movie posters. It's just gone. Sure. Uh, there's like some bricks in the corner or something. I mean, I got to be honest. All the movie posters are going to be gone soon. So this room is has turned from the Blu-ray room back into a guest bedroom. So, wow. Or is going to anyway. Okay. So, um. But I think for people who regularly watch the video version of this podcast on YouTube.com, uh, this this might be a whole new Zach for you because they're very used to the same overhead angle of you sitting in your uh, your office. This is like a good 30 degrees lower, I would bet. Oh, is it? <laughs> as far as the camera goes. <laughs> okay. I you kind of you. look like a different person from this angle. To Do me. I? Nice. I feel like I have I'm just, blindness. Though, it so. looks like I'm sitting at your feet <laughs> and you're telling me a story. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about movies, Zach. Um, I got a new laptop, and so now I'm a little bit more mobile. I'm excited to one day um, start recording from my movie room. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh, are you going to set up like a permanent desk in there type of thing? Like have I a, don't know. Are you going to have a streaming setup? Are you going to start playing COD online? On I don't Twitch? know what that is. I don't know what that <laughs> is. COD? I'm oh, COD? COD. I, I know you're referring to, but do people call it? I think they call, call it COD. It no, come on. Please. They, they, they call it a fish. They call it COD. <sighs> mm, I've heard Call of Duty and COD. Yeah, I don't. Huh? I'm going to question go. you on that, James. I'm but in a different again, circle I've, than you are, evidently. I have never watched someone play COD. I don't I don't even say that. I've never watched someone play Call of Duty on Twitch. The only game I've ever watched someone play on Twitch uh-huh. was uh, Super Mario Maker. And I watched that hours and hours of it before I bought it. Because I just, I needed <laughs> to get my fix in. Huh. I only watch one Twitch streamer. Uh, I forget his name. Because I only watch him when he tweets that he's streaming. So it's not too often, but this guy plays GeoGuessr. Have you ever seen that? Oh yeah, he's good. GeoGuessr is is first of all, I would be awful at it, but this guy's amazing at it. Like he can yeah. go hours with GeoGuessr is a is a website where it pulls up Google Maps, it oh, drops yeah. you somewhere on the planet, and then it counts how many steps you have to take away from where it dropped you to figure out the location of where you are on the earth. And this guy, I've seen him do it literally without taking steps. Like he gets like, the block. Like he moves what? around, finds a sign, zooms into it and can tell from the sign. Yeah. Like where he is, he is in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I geo guys are super fun to play. Uh perhaps <laughs> we could do that for the Patreon. Like each of us do do five of those, we share our screen, do geo guesser. Okay. Sure. That could be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. Sure. 
our own little Twitch stream stream. Sure. Awesome. Well, uh, this has been great. <laughs> James, you said you're excited, I'm excited to talk excited about, about today's that. movie. I am excited to talk about today's movie. Um, but I, I, I have a check-in. So, um, I'll just, uh, I'll just hit this right here and, uh, well, I'll just hold this up. And I just wanted to let you guys know. Oh, wait, hold on. I screwed it up. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do this. And then I'll do this. There, there we go. So I just wanted to let you guys know and get your live reaction to the fact that we have a Cinerealist TikTok now. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you executive decision this one, James? I did. And you guys are the first Cinerealist TikTok right now. <sighs> you're, you're the first TikTok and you're learning about the fact that this podcast now has a TikTok account. I'm you- not sure this is how TikTok works. It's not? <laughs> Well, that a video like this does not go viral. Well, I mean, it's our first one. Uh, we have literally zero followers. The account is one day old. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't going to go viral anyway. So, but now it'll forever sit as the first TikTok is you guys figuring out, finding out that we have a TikTok. And now it's over. I don't even have the TikTok app and I'm not going to get it. <laughs> I really think you should. I think you should um, you should let me repost our TikToks on Instagram. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> like TikTok a, like a is going to be vi- You wouldn't want the TikToks on Instagram because I plan on them being very juvenile. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, and, and our Instagram is incredibly professional. <laughs> and very random. They're going to be very random. In fact, if you guys want the Cinerealist login, I say everybody should have it and it's a free for all over there. Whatever you want to put up there. No, I think uh, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> All right, so, Zach, I bet you want it. I only want it, and then I'm going to pretend that I'm Kyle using it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Can you guys send me like a nice. um, like a web link to our our TikTok account? So no, I can, I can watch them on my browser. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to know what's on, what's on our TikTok account. It's going to be TikTok after TikTok of Zach yelling at cats in Kyle's voice. <laughs> you're going to you're going to deep fake my voice. <laughs> yeah, we're going to Tom Cruise this thing for <laughs> Great. Kyle. For sure. Um yeah, so that was my big news. Was we Okay, so Cinerealist TikTok, go to TikTok, type in Cinerealist and uh in theory you'll find it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is that right. is that TikTok.com? TikTok.com. Okay, yeah. I, I can go there. Yeah. Uh, other things you could do with the podcast is you could check out the video version of this podcast, which is not a 60-second TikTok. It's like a two-hour-plus thing for every episode. Go to YouTube.com, search Cinerealists, uh, watch us while you listen to us. You could also support us on Patreon at Patreon.com slash Cinerealists, R-double-E with an S on the end. Uh, support the podcast, get extra pay, get extra after show audio, as well as other Cinerealist swag. You could leave us an Apple podcast review, five stars only, leave a little bit of text and we will read it and discuss it on the podcast. Or you could send us a listener email to heyguys at Cinerealist.com. Send a comment, a question, a list suggestion, a movie suggestion, any of those kinds of things, and we will read and discuss it on the podcast anything else we need to say before we jump into uh this week's main event movie nothing all right no i don't think so all right well ready to do it we're gonna talk about a movie that we saw in a movie theater because that's the only place you can see it right now uh the movie is titled spider-man spider-man colon no way home We're going to get into it right after this clip. You ready? I'm ready. Nice knowing you, Spider-Man. Wait, excuse me? The entire world's about to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Everyone? Uh, Can't some people still know? That's not how the spell works. So my girlfriend's just going to forget about everything we've been through? I mean, is she even going to be my girlfriend? All right, fine. 
everyone in the world is going to forget that you're Spider-Man, except your girlfriend. Thank you so much. That... Oh my God, Ned. Okay, let's not change the parameters of this spell anymore while I'm casting. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I swear, I'm done. I'm done. No, but my aunt May should really know. Did you, did you just stop talking? <laughs> That was Spider-Man No Way Home, a 2021 American superhero film based on the Marvel Comics character Spider-Man. This was directed by John Watts, written by Chris McKenna and Eric Summers, starring Tom Holland, Zendaya, Benedict Cumberbatch, John Favreau, Marissa Tomei, amongst others. The official IMDb plot synopsis for Spider-Man No Way Home is, With Spider-Man's identity now revealed, Peter asks Doctor Strange for help. When a spell goes wrong, dangerous foes from other worlds start to appear, forcing Peter to discover what it truly means to be (laughs) Spider-Man. <laughs> we, we, let's drop the dash. Oh, I it cracks me up every time. I love it. <laughs> Spider Dash Man. Okay, so just a little bit of setup. If you haven't seen Spider Man Far From Home, at the end of that movie, uh Peter Parker was revealed to be Spider Man. To and, the world. Uh, to the world. And uh, have we seen Spider Man since then? I don't think so. No. Think he's been in any of the other MCU movies or anything like that. So it's been a couple years since we've seen Spider-Man on screen. Uh, we should say up front that this is going to be two reviews, a very quick non-spoiler review and a spoiler-filled review that will be much longer, I'm sure, because this is definitely one of those movies that you got to get into the details on for sure. Uh, but I think we'll be able to give you a vibe for what we thought of it in overview in the non-spoilers. And if you haven't seen the movie yet, then, uh, just hit pause at the end of the non-spoiler review and come back to it after you've seen the movie. Uh, that being said, if you're interested in Spider-Man, I doubt you haven't seen it yet because this movie did crazy box office and not just like post pandemic crazy box office, like any normal time crazy box office. And this is kind of the first movie to really do that. Uh, Unfortunately, it's doing it right on the eve of Omicron becoming a real issue (laughs) in this country and across the world. Yes. So um, I, uh, I, I, I've been back to movie theaters for a couple months now, and this was by far the first time I felt uncomfortable being in a movie theater. What was, y'all's experience being in a movie theater for this particular film so my theater was packed and Mm -hmm. it is the first time i've been in a packed theater in two years it's safe Mm -hmm. to say um i i'm vaccinated i'm boosted i was wearing my n95 mask um but even still and, and and my county does still have a mask mandate um but there were still people around me like the person next to me was not wearing their mask the entire time and so it definitely felt a little odd being around that many strangers in such a close proximity. But the fact that I've got as much defense as I could have against this thing made me feel okay with being there. Mm-hmm. How about you, Zach? Um, I went to the theater about 15 minutes beforehand and got inside. And then I realized I forgot my mask in the car. So I went back to the car, got my mask, came back inside went to buy my ticket and uh, realized it was almost a completely sold out show. <laughs> I, I just forgotten that sh- things could sell out anymore. You know, I just, right. I took it for granted everything. that the yeah, exactly. people don't go to the movies anymore. Yeah. So the only three seats left in the theater were front row. Ooh. Oh, uh, so that's a long I, movie to watch front row straight up like that. So I, so I got my front row ticket. I sat in, at least I was in the middle of the front row. And I kind of leaned back. I was at the Epic Theater, so I'm leaning back all the way. And uh, it's really a weird experience being in the front row of a theater that close. Epic is a lot closer than Regal, I think, to the the front. 
Mm-hmm. It was like it's very forced perspective. So anytime you, it's just a a close up or a medium close up of someone, it's just like this huge shoulders and then like that head you know goes to a try. <laughs> it's like a it's a triangle uh, situation. Um, so I waited about fifteen minutes and then I went to the like the side of the theater back by the stairs and I watched for about ten minutes from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Until I was positive that one of the few empty seats in the theater in a normal area, no one was just in the bathroom. And then once I was sure no one was coming, I just grabbed a seat in the middle. Oh, that's good. So So. you're the weird guy who's like walking around, standing in the aisle, watching the movie, making everyone (laughs) comfortable. (laughs) <laughs> no, 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 I'm sure no one noticed me. I crawled up the stairs. Like you literally of, crawled. I slinked. No, I didn't. <laughs> that, that's not. even but, weirder than <laughs> I did not uh, crawl. But I, uh, I tried to be inconspicuous, and I was depth. So in that, in this particular theater, everyone is very much in their own little zone. The seats are very like large and spread out. It's not like a normal kind of old style, and so uh, I don't think anyone really paid attention to me at all and then the seat i actually grabbed was on the aisle anyways so oh, that's good yeah epics are nice they're all lay layback seats right yeah no matter which mm-hmm. theater you're in yeah yeah with that's like the cup holders and the nice sofa chairs yeah every theater in my area is those recliner seats so I've... that's because you live in a bougie area we get it <laughs> <laughs> no, I... yeah no absolutely no absolutely yeah that's my for only... sure so i just i haven't seen a movie in a like a traditional theater in on the on a, I don't know how long it's been with like your normal just like rows and rows of slowly stacked up seats. Oh, I was I was definitely I was in an old AMC with uh you know stadium seating. It wasn't that old, but um I mean they had us packed in like sardines mm-hmm. for sure. It was um it was uncomfortable. Definitely. And and I would say there was probably 10% mask wearing mm. in that audience. And, at epic uh, james in case you care uh you're required to wear a mask interesting yeah it's good i uh and i hate to sacrifice my health for you know value but i have a list so <laughs> i have to go to amc <laughs> if only epic took a list i'd be there on sure. james tombstone it was gonna say at least i had a list <laughs> i'm just A-list, saying I, like normal movie post pandemic movies have been perfectly fine. I mean, I go, I, I, I work from home so I can go on a weekday at the first showing at like 1230, you know, in the day. And there's like five people in there. It's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. I feel totally comfortable and safe in that environment. This was the first time where I was like, this is probably a recipe for disaster. Um, then when you take into account just how well this movie did and the fact that that was the case across the country and in a, it, it, across the world except for china china was the only place this movie didn't play this past weekend uh i'm just i'm curious to know just how much how many omicron <laughs> infections <laughs> are like solely due to the popularity of this movie will we you know see I mean? I, a spider-man like, spike I, yeah i don't know if you, you could ever track that but could you you know what i mean James, like you could you say like this will- like, Are you suggesting this will be the deadliest movie of all time? I mean, if if you can see that, like, the movie was released here, and then like four days later, ginormous spike, which has been happening anyway without this movie coming out. But if like the the trend doubled in one day, I mean, I don't know what uh, what other cultural event where people a mass gather yeah, a across the world. James, have you forgotten about Christmas? <laughs> I'm saying like in three to four <laughs> days it spikes. That's pre Christmas. It takes People get days. together pre Christmas. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's gonna just, be a uh, Spider Man Christmas one two punch. Sure. When I say this movie did well, though, we're talking five hundred and eighty seven million dollars globally. It's the third biggest uh, weekend opening ever. Yep. It's yeah. the sixth film to ever cross five hundred million uh, in a single weekend, and only the second to do so without China. Oh, they didn't get China. They did not get China. Wow. Imagine if they had gotten China. Yeah. Evidently, there's not enough China in this movie for China to say, yes, you can play this here. (laughs) Remember when filmmakers were doing that like constantly a few years ago? Seems to have died down a little bit. 
I don't know. I think it's still happening. You, I still see. I mean, it's. I still see movies where they're adding, like Chinese characters, or or you look at the um, production companies at the beginning, and there's at least one or two Chinese production companies at the very beginning. So I think it's still happening. It doesn't Maybe bother me. Numb. Like it doesn't. You know, I know some people feel, might think it feels forced, but it doesn't bug me. But it's still happening. Yeah. Maybe I'm just numb to it at this point. Yeah, that's possible. For sure. Normally, when we are reviewing a movie and we spend the majority of the time talking about anything but the movie, mm-hmm. it means that everyone hated it. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, is that what we're doing here or not? Right. Is that what's happening here? <laughs> is that what's happening right here? I mean, yeah, I, I think we're discussing the fact that this is the first significant box office movie in, since the pandemic started. Like, I think that's worthy to talk about. I think Dune would have been that, except it was also on TV. Yeah. I mean, Dune was a significant movie, but Dune was never, even in a normal time, never going to be what Spider-Man is. Not well, because it's, it's Spider-Man. <laughs> it's Spider-Man and it's MCU Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And it's this Spider-Man, which if you've seen the movie, you know what that means. But, uh Okay. Uh well let's let's get into the movie itself, right? Let's forget all the ancillary things we've been discussing Ooh. so far. Let's talk about the movie. Ancillary. Someone Again. turned over their word calendar today. And and ancillary, not ancillary. ancillary. It's ancillary. 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 I think you're adding extra ancillary there. No, come on. <laughs> it's ancillary. 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 Twidal Elijah Four. <laughs> <laughs> It's ancillary. Write yeah. in and say if it's ancillary or ancillary. No, don't write ancillary. in. Record yourself saying it. <laughs> Record and yourself in. We'll play as many recordings as we get of people Repl- saying ancillary. I'm Kyle, I hope sure this ancillary. is the. I hope this is the Instagram video and <laughs> the next TikTok. <laughs> I'm making a note right now. <laughs> All right. Um, You're thinking talk- of like consigliere, James. <laughs> No, I, I'm not thinking about that. It's ancillary. Now you're thinking about it. <laughs> I honestly, I've heard it say said both ways, so it's possible you guys are right, and I guarantee I'm right. So <laughs> <laughs> ancillary. That's right. All right, non spoilers again. Broad thoughts on Spider Dash Man: Colon No Way Home. Uh, what'd you guys think of it? Should we go the person who has the least? investment in this movie to the person who has the most which in my mind would be kyle zach james or should we go from most personal investment to least james zach kyle we we can go least to most okay i'll I'll say right now i watched this is my fourth spider-man movie i watched this weekend so i was doing (laughs) (laughs) wow it sounds like you might have the most personal well no because are you a super fan do you do this every weekend (laughs) i had avoided a couple of them and i'm like i should probably do a little catch up before we get into this so so have you seen all of them now i have not seen amazing spider-man 2 but i i think i've seen every spider-man since toby Maguire in 2002 that nice. face? Yeah. Yep. Um, and three of those I watched in the last twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, so are you Spider Man out? Are you Spire Dash Man out? Yeah. Or are you Spire Matt Dash Man on fire? Um, I kind of want to go back and watch Tommy McGuire Spider Man. Right. I, that's like Absolutely. One, that's what I didn't touch on. Like, like I got to I got to jump into Andrew Garfield Spider Man. I got to jump into Tom Holland Spider Man, but. I need a little catch up on my uh on my Andrew Garf or my uh whatever the guy's Tobes. Name is. Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire, thank you very much. Right. Um Toby Mac. Toby Mac. So Toby Mac, he's my Spider Man, right? I was just of the age. I think I was ni- nineteen or twenty when the first ones came out. So like that is who I associate with Spider Man. And I've never had a problem with Tom Holland. I always thought he was fine. And I thought this movie got me on board for Tom Holland as Spider Man. I agree. I, I like oh James. I'm I'm really here curious to hear more from you. Um, I like his his take on it. His balance of like being the kid and being the hero. Um, you know, like there's always been the theme of 
great responsibility, blah, 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 through all these movies. And that really... <laughs> <laughs> you really you really nailed the quote, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, you know, Uncle Ben's lying there. He's like, Peter, great responsibility, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. And scene. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> um, yeah. And th- I think this movie captured that um, and was able to encapsulate that. I've I've always found the Tobey Maguire Spider Man be kind of light. Like you know, he was introduced as a sidekick. Uh, they they were definitely fun movies. The first two, um, Homecoming and Far From Home. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then this one went, I don't want to call it darker per se, but this one definitely went deeper than the previous. Dramatic, ones. more dramatic. More dramatic. There's that's the that's good. Yeah. More, def, more dramatic. Um th- there was a couple of moments that kind of sort of got a little misty in the theater. Like I, I'm surprised a superhero movie got to me emotionally, but there were a couple of times that this this one got to me. Um there's also a lot of other really fun stuff that went on that I can't talk about right now i'm looking forward to um and there's some you know some criticisms i have too but again i don't want to get into all that so i'm going to say overall that i i enjoyed this movie uh, i enjoyed this movie i think the most of the three uh i'm gonna keep messing these names up and not andrew garfield tom <laughs> tom Holland. Hollins, thank you of the three spider tom Hall- tom Holland spider-man movies and uh yeah i'm a i'm sort of ready to see more of what this Spider-Man has to go. Nice. Nice. Um, man, Spider-Man. So I, I, I'm not a huge fan of the original Spider-Man films. I, I just, I watched them obviously when they came out. Um, I kind of found them a little cheesy. You know, I think I found Tobey Maguire specifically in those first three movies, just such a, like a doofy, guy i don't know he's so doofy um and i I, whenever i tell people that they're like well yeah but peter parker's doofy so he played it perfectly Mm -hmm. and i was like well i think that peter parker could be doofy but you don't need a doofy actor to play him i don't know and i think toby mcguire is doofy in general yeah doofier than andrew garfield so so okay so hold on we okay. haven't gotten to Andrew. I'm, I'm gonna okay, okay, I'm gonna end you here. I, I just I never I never emotionally connected with the Tobey Maguire movies. Now I know James did, so I'm mm-hmm. not gonna poo poo those movies. Okay, no poo poo to them. Um, I didn't connect to them for a lot of. Re- I mean, I just I, I didn't like the color palette. I didn't like the Ooh, the, the color palette. Char- yeah, I didn't like the <laughs> characters. I like the Green Goblin was a character that I never cared about at all and i i think that's um people disagree with me that's totally cool andrew garfield came along i liked his spider-man um because i think he was like he wasn't cool but he wasn't doofy i don't know he just i liked his peter parker and i liked spider-man i was fine with him then tom holland came around and i liked him a lot too i thought he played um, what people have always talked about Peter Parker being, you know, kind of like this nerdy, kind of awkward kid. He played it really well, but while still being like, just not so like, <laughs> I don't know, just odd as Tobey Maguire. So I, I always really liked Tom Holland more. I liked Tom Holland and Tom Holland Spider-Man more than I liked his movies. Because like the last movie, uh, Far From Home, I didn't I didn't like too much i gave it like three out of five it was fine but it was again kind of cheesy i don't know anyways fast forward to this movie um i would say this movie was more dramatic than we've gotten in a long time from spider-man movie and it was it was a lot of fun and it was really good like i here's the thing there's one scene that Tom Holland gives a performance and it's pretty much just his performance. Like it's a close up on him. And I was like, that is that kid can act right. It convinced you that mm-hmm. that guy has chops how he performed that scene. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. You maybe do. I don't know. And, uh, and then there was another scene, which I would love to talk about in spoilers. That was maybe my favorite scene in movies this year. Is it the conversation? No. Before the action? No. Okay. It's right. not. Is it the hug? No. 
Well, we'll talk about it in spoilers, guys. I know, but I'm we'll so excited. It. Okay, let's get this. I know. Let's get, let's get the part of the way. And we'll get so, the like, so the movie I was on board with, I, I was having a good time. I wasn't like in love, you know, like, like this is the greatest thing I've ever seen, but I was having a good time with it. But to have a scene that was my favorite scene of the entire year, that's saying something. And there was a lot, there was a lot to like of this movie, a lot going on. And it, this movie, I think, was impressive to pull off. Um, I know, Kyle, you've been worried that Marvel has like played all their cards in the last uh, kind of run of movies Mm -hmm. that like what else what else do they have to give us? They already gave us this perfectly wrapped package. And now I'm not interested anymore is is maybe a summation of what you said. I I'd say that this movie shows that Marvel still has some aces up their sleeve and they can still pull them out and and produce something that's pretty intricate, satisfying and clever. I, I agree. Um, that's part of my criticism also. But again, I, I really got to save it for a spoiler because anything no I say was just going to start giving stuff away. No problem. Um, yeah, that, that's the, that's the gist of what I have to say. James, as the Spider Dash Band fan, what would you think? Sure. I, um, I, I like this movie a lot, for sure. I was lukewarm. I would say I, I enjoyed and appreciated the first Tom Holland Spider-Man movie, uh, Homecoming. Yep. yep. I liked kind of like the punk rock aesthetic. I liked that he did feel like a high schooler and I didn't think he was like sarcastic enough or like dweeby enough, but I mean, it was fine. It, 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 I chalked that up to like, it's not my Spider-Man movie, but it's somebody's Spider-Man movie and it's not offensive to the character or anything. And sure. So I moved on from it type of thing. Um, and then uh, No Way Home came out, and it's not like No Way Home. No Way Home was uh, categorically worse than <laughs> Homecoming from a plot perspective, but Tom Holland's performance was in line with the first movie, and that made it okay, I guess. Um, if you have a decent Spider-Man at the core of these movies, then I think you'll get away with it, even if the plot itself is not much to write home about. Uh, and so I really expected very similar things from this movie. And what I got was uh, a Tom Holland performance where he maintains kind of being the um, the the younger guy, but also digs deep. Kind of like we saw him do in uh, the end of Infinity War. Do you remember that movie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When like Iron Man's disappearing, there's a moment there where he also digs deep for a second there and we get a lot of that in this movie and I think it worked there and it works here for sure. Uh I also feel like I've never felt sorry for Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man uh until that scene in Infinity War and I hadn't revisited that emotion until this movie where they just hammer you with it over and over and over again where you're just like you feel sorry for the guy because he's trying and nothing is working out the way uh, he wants it to work out, even if some of the things he's doing are a little silly from like a hero perspective. Uh, and yeah, so this is probably the first Spider-Man movie, Tom Holland Spider-Man movie, where I was in for the performance from the lead and I was also in for the plot that they were telling. And I thought it dragged a little bit at the beginning, but really once things start happening on screen and the cast gets a little bigger, I just, I dug everything that they were shoveling my way. And it was, uh, it was a fun one as much as I was uncomfortable at the beginning of the movie. I'll, the movie just kind of deals its cards as you go along. And it was fun to be in an audience that was reacting to something that yeah. was projected up, you know, a hundred feet on a hundred foot screen in front of us. Type of My thing. audience was very interactive and oh, yeah. it was great. There were definitely some cheers from my audience and some, uh, gasps when things happened. So they were into it. Um, James, I agree with you. The beginning felt like, like we have to keep this in Marvel universe. So we have to bring in, you know, other people just to remind you that this is MCU. Uh, mm-hmm. n- but right once once it kind of found its own plot and the 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 characters expanded, it mm-hmm. really felt like its own movie. And I I mean I do think that this movie can work as a standalone. Like if you like Spider Man just in general, but don't care about MCU, 
you can enjoy this movie and you don't feel like you're getting all this weird MCU lore in the background. You will at the beginning. At the, right. At the beginning, you will. But And then like half an hour in, that will move to the background. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that was nice. Um, uh, yeah. Kyle, did you, you're probably the closest person to somebody who could answer this. Were you frustrated at all with some of the film, the mechanics of the film at all? Uh, maybe this is a spoiler question. I don't know if you can't answer it without spoiling things. We're gonna talk in like a okay. couple minutes, yeah, guys. Yeah, we'll we'll give it a minute and then I'll I'll, re- I'll re-ask you that question. <laughs> don't need to dance around things. Just hold sure. on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, but overall, I enjoyed it uh, a lot, and uh, I'm glad I saw it in a theater. I'm sure it would have played fine at home. But I don't think I think some of the things might be a little underwhelming at home compared to like being in an audience and having people like audibly gasp or literally sob. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there is something it's been a while since I've been in a full movie theater. <clears throat> so maybe this is just short term memory. But I this is the first movie that I've seen in a movie theater in two years where everybody was on the same roller coaster together. <laughs> And it's like this giant group of people all having similar emotions focused towards one direction of the room all at the same time. Uh, And I think I would forgotten what that feeling is, uh, or at least just um, maybe undervalued it. And uh, I'll, I'll say I missed it. And this was a, this was a good one for that. For sure. I will say visually, I think this movie would play fine on a TV. There's only one sequence I can think of where I was glad to see it on the like on a big screen. Mm-hmm. But I really enjoyed, like you said, James, that communal experience. And I think that's where what lies. That's where this movie benefits from being in the theater is to be with mm-hmm. all those other people who are also invested and on board. And right. Like, I mean, again, it's been years since I've been in a theater where people have cheered. And that's a, that's a weird statement to say. Like to realize it's been multiple years since I was in a theater and people yeah. were like who last time was Infinity or was uh Avengers Endgame. Endgame. Yeah, that's right. So Yeah, nobody was cheering at Captain Marvel. I Captain think Marvel. wasn't she after Endgame or right before? No. She might have been right before. I think she was en- before. Wasn't Endgame our last Marvel theater movie before the pandemic? Or or no, no, or was No Way before, Home? Before there was Shang Chi. No, no, no. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm saying before coronavirus. Oh, um, yeah, probably. I, was was there an Ant Man? Wasn't No Way Home after Endgame? I think Ant Man and Wasp yes. was before Endgame. Yeah, no, yeah, No Way Home was after Endgame. Okay, so I think No Way Home is our last pre-pandemic Marvel movie. No, no, I mean, uh, Far From Home was after. Sorry, I, yeah, James, you did the same thing. You were talking about Far From Home, but said. No way home. So, yeah, far from home was our last pre-pandemic Marvel movie. James is going to verify that. You're right. Okay, that is absolutely right. Spider Dash Man colon Far From Home, July 2019. Then two years later, July 2021, Black Widow. Black Widow. And I I never saw Far From Home in the theater, and I get I didn't see it till last night because. Like Zach said, I saw Endgame. I was like, "Great, I'm done. This is perfect. I don't need, I don't need more of this." Mm-hmm. And I think, um, I think if if we got more Far From Homes, I would have felt the same way. But No Way Home is a different movie. Agreed. All right. Anything else non spoiler to say before we jump into the nitty gritty details of this movie? Uh, I thought everyone gave good performances. Mm, Agreed. Yeah. I thought Benedict Cumberbatch's American accent had improved. Yeah, I I will say it's no spoiler that Doctor Strange is in the movie. It was right there in the plot synopsis. But um, I, if I had one complaint, and luckily this is a spoiler-free complaint, it's that Doctor Strange is a little bit of a goofball. I don't know. They, I feel like they've turned him into kind of a joke in a way. Like what? What way do you mean, goofball or a joke? Like we have reckless? to get into. Yeah, we'd have to get into kind of 
plot specifics. Uh, I think he's to... always been arrogant and reckless. Mm. I think that's baked in. Because that's the, the kind. It kind of made him the wise was. sage in Endgame. You know what I mean? He's like the guy who knew how many combinations and the fact that the one combination would happen. You know what I mean? He gave. He had faith in the the yeah, numbers or the he, visions. And, for sure, he was that. But think about the original Doctor Strange movie, and before he became Doctor Strange, you know that when he was a doctor, he was an arrogant jerk that had a god complex, and I, I think that's all still part of him. Yeah, I don't disagree. Maybe I just I, I have too much distance from that movie and today. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But if we didn't have him in this movie, we wouldn't have other things that I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Anything else? All right. Let's letterbox it. Uh, I will give this a four and a half. I'll go four. This is a solid four. I think I'm good with that. Nice. Two fours and a four and a half for Spider. Dash man colon no way home. Uh, if you have not seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, you should just hit pause right now and come back after you've seen the movie, and then you can hear us talk about spoilers. And if you want to hear spoilers because you've seen the movie or you don't particularly care to hear spoilers ahead of time, then uh, listen on through the rest of the podcast because from now until the very end. We're going to say whatever we want about Spider-Man colon No Way Home, as well as any other Spider-Man movie that exists. <laughs> so know that that's about to happen. Let's get into spoilers for Spider-Man colon No Way Home. Uh, does anybody have something they just have to get off their chest first thing here? I mean, well, let's I think go we through should... it chronologically. Yeah, j- yeah. Okay. Let's let's go through it. The first time the crowd really had a reaction was when uh he lawyered up oh yeah yeah when matt murdoch aka daredevil shows up on screen yeah uh that was one of the only genuine surprises i had while watching this movie like i should say that i didn't watch the trailers and yet i knew doc ock was in the movie uh i knew some version of uh green goblin was in the movie although i didn't know uh willem dafoe was in it i thought maybe it was just like a cg creation or something like that using his voice um and i had heard that andrew garfield and toby mcguire would be in the movie and i figured they'd be like cameos they'd sh- or like show one up real quick exactly yes yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and then be out of the movie you'd and see him for 2 minutes yeah <laughs> that's so definitely not what this was chronologically here well, let's put that aside. Okay. That way, as we go through chronologically, we can reference it because I think those are major things yeah. for sure. Uh, but Daredevil, did you guys watch it on Netflix? Was that a surprise to you? I watched the first couple seasons of Netflix Daredevil mm-hmm. and I liked uh, Charlie Cox. He, he's the actor. I liked his his mm-hmm. take on Daredevil. Um, you know, I was a little bummed when they canceled the show, but I also didn't like finish that third season. But I'm glad I'm actually glad to see they brought him back because I do think that his his take on the character is is interesting and well done. And um, I would I'm, I'm happy to see more Daredevil in the MCU, however they build him in. Um, I never watched Daredevil, so I actually had no idea who it was. Um, mm-hmm. I had to Google it after the movie, oh. but it was super fun to see people in the audience of the theater realize it was someone that they knew. And you could absolutely tell that it was a huge surprise to everyone. Like no one was expecting it, uh, this guy to be in the movie. And so even though I didn't know who it was, it was super fun to like witness everyone's enthusiasm, you know, cause like he puts his cane on the ground and people are like, what's that? And then either he says his name or they see his glasses or I don't know what it was. The glasses that tips you off. People, went nuts and it was super fun and Mm -hmm. nerdy (laughs) (laughs) yeah i wonder if um if that was added late in the game especially when news leaked that like tom holland and andrew garfield were probably going to show up in this type of thing if they were like i I knew a long time ago that tom holland would be in this i mean well i knew tom holland sorry movie too Andrew Garfield and uh, Toby, <laughs> Toby, 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 we're all going to do it. So, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I'm wondering if they added him later just to get that pop. I remember like on my phone, Google occasionally recommends me news articles that like it thinks I I might like. And it popped one up that was like Kevin Feige says uh what's his name? Something Cox, Richard Cox, Charlie Cox. Charlie Cox. Uh Charlie Cox might be in the could still be in the MCU type of thing. And I was like, "Oh, okay. I read this article. It was like basically like clickbait because it's like Okay, he once said that nothing is uh, nothing is impossible, basically, was his answer when somebody asked him that question. And that was like a week ago. And I'm kind of impressed that that article, which probably knew, because people have been previewing this movie, that, uh, that he was in that movie. And that the article led on, at, like, not at all that, it, that he was in the Spider-Man movie. Uh, and so when I saw him on screen, I wasn't shocked because I had just read that article about how Kevin Feige didn't deny that he could be in the universe. Uh, but I was impressed that, I mean, I'm in circles and nobody leaked that. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Um, and I like the Daredevil TV show, uh, but I also liked Daredevil, the Ben, ben Affleck movies. Oh, I've never seen that I one. Don't. Mm. <laughs> I like it. Don't watch the normal. Don't watch the theatrical. Watch the director's cut. It's pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Zach, have you at least seen the hallway oneer from Daredevil TV show? I think that I have. The, if you haven't, that's it, it's a true oneer, and it's, it. I mean, it's it's masterful. Like like it, it's done so well. Yeah. Whenever uh, I I remember back when Zach and I used to work together, we would talk about you know. TV shows and movies, and I'd be like, "You gotta watch uh, True Detective because of this one." Or mm-hmm. Zach's like, "All right, I'll watch it." And then, like later on, I found out he watched it, and I'm like, "Oh, you watched True Detective?" And he's like, "No, I just watched that one scene." Yeah, and I'm like, "Come that's, on, dude. that's what you told <laughs> me like to the, do." It's like the best <laughs> thing. It's like the best show ever, or at least the best season of a show ever. <laughs> And the wonder is good, but in the context of the rest of the show, like it makes it even no. better. Zach James. just like watches the best thing about the best, the best. Season. No, James, it's because ever. I watched two things from True Detective. I started watching True Detective, and right. within like six minutes, there's a a dead woman impaled on a tree, sure. and everything's in gray tone. And I was like, this is absolutely not something that I would enjoy. <laughs> and if James oh. recommended this to me. He clearly doesn't know what I don't like. I am willing to bet if you invested in the first season of True Detective, which are standalone seasons, so you don't have to watch the rest of it. Just watch season one, beginning, middle, and end. It'll end for you. Uh, I I agree that maybe the setup is a little grim, oh. but you you will end up loving True Detective. <laughs> it, it's grim throughout. End. It's not just like it's grim throughout, but it's not woman. woman episode one, and we never come back to that. <laughs> there is. It's not impaled woman on a tree constantly throughout the whole show. Uh, it's it's close. I don't know. I I, I don't want to sugarcoat it. It's 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 a grip show. I'm not saying sit the kids down and the wife and watch it as a family. I'm just saying it's not the setup is grim on purpose. It's shocking you into getting interested into the story. Do but not watch it with the wife. Evidently it had a, a different it, effect on Zach. It looked like seven plus Fargo. No, that's not I, right. I don't want to say it's, it's seven, as, but not Fargo. Yeah, but seven is so like, I no, don't, the plot of Fargo, or not something. the style of pl- Fargo. It's not the plot of Fargo. No. Okay. <laughs> You've watched seven minutes of it. Trust what's me, the plot of the what's plot the plot? Of of, what's the plot of Fargo in one sentence? Uh, well, the plot two of cops Fargo. track down a serial killer or no, a killer. Two, right? two <laughs> small <laughs> town cops track down a murder that's way bigger than anything that they've ever encountered. Like, like they are, they're a step above traffic cops just in the <laughs> what they normally deal with, and now they're dealing with this murderer. The true detective, they are detectives. They investigate murder they're not like what is they going go on undercover yeah. they yeah they travel across state lines to find they're you know they... alcoholics <laughs> and they're hard-boiled <laughs> people so right so yeah if, if, if we only get four words it's, it's exactly <laughs> the same thing but if you give us a few more you, you can tell there's some difference yeah there. 
You don't like um, Fargo okay. anyway. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, no, th- th- this is much grimmer than Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get back on the path. Moving on. So, so now we know because of this reveal, Daredevil, which was a Netflix Marvel show, uh, could be folded into the MCU. Because I, I here's the question. So Netflix, uh, pre Disney, I don't remember if that was in the Disney era or not. Yeah, gets a hold of Marvel, right? They pay to have four or five shows on Netflix with Marvel characters in it. I'm sure Marvel owns the Daredevil character, but wouldn't Netflix own that character, that version of Daredevil? You know what I mean? With that actor and those story elements and things like that like how do you have that character version of daredevil in the mcu without getting netflix's permission well maybe they did or maybe netflix sold it yeah it's one of the yeah i mean right those are things that like have not been announced publicly so i'm surprised it could happen and i guess netflix daredevil did reference the MCU like they talked about the events of the Avengers and whatever happened in, in the 2012 Avengers movie so it, it wasn't standalone to the universe obviously like to, you know t- uh, Tony Stark never showed up in it but it sure. did it did at least exist within the MCU plot wise it did reference it but it referenced it not directly no like they couldn't say the word Avengers so they would say the the uh the problem in New York. Well, they, they you were know in what New I mean? York. The, I, I think I, that's I think what I'm saying. They said like the event like, and with, with like gods and aliens coming out of the sky. Maybe that's what they did. Okay. Right. They would dance around it so that it did link, but without using a direct I guess, reference. I to guess you're right. Yeah. And things okay. like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm this impressed. This conversation that. has been 10 times right. as long. Okay. As we, we, cameo. We, we of the can't Daredevil. talk this long about every <laughs> cameo. Sure. So. I should say though, before we move on, if they're going to pull more people, they should absolutely pull Jessica Jones into the, into the MCU. I'd be all for it, for sure. Those I, are like my, the two good Netflix series. My gut tells me uh, we're not going to see him again in anything more than just little cameos. I don't think this is a springboard to him being a, a, a player. I think it was just a fun little, fun little Easter egg. I think if they dig deep enough and long enough, they're going to have to dig Daredevil out of somewhere. Whether it's him or somebody else, Daredevil will be here. I don't know if it'll be that guy, but Daredevil will be in the MCU at some point. He's a not a major Marvel character, but a tier two character for sure. I think we'll get Fantastic Four way before Daredevil. Agreed on that. Yes. Okay. Let's go back to Spider-Man colon Far From Home. No Way Home. No Way Home. Starring Tobey Maguire. Star, starring, <laughs> starring Tom Holland. Um, okay, um, we were going through chronologically. Strange. We got to the first fifteen yeah. minutes. What was he the goes next? to Doctor Strange and he wants everyone to forget that he is uh, Spider Man because right. uh, Jameson is like, uh, you know, uh, getting everyone to hate him basically, and it's ruining his life. They can't get into MIT. Blah blah blah. And mm-hmm. so, like, while Doctor Strange is is doing his spell to like make everyone forget. He's like, no, no, but don't let MJ forget. And don't let, you know, this person forget and that kind of thing. And it ruins the spell. The spell gets out of control. I liked all that. I thought that was fun. And then I especially like the part where I felt like Dr. Strange looked pretty silly. Did he? I just thought he, I don't know, was arrogant. It's, I mean, it, it was convenient. They're like, okay, how do we rip the interdimensional time continuum. And so like, let's have Dr. Strange botch a spell basically. So I, I, yeah. Could you call it a plot device or a mechanic? Sure. But I, I liked the fact that Tom Holland, Peter Parker, like you know, he acts impulsively like a kid. He's like, I want to forget who I am. And then, you know, he realizes, okay, I can't be that impulsive. So that he's like, but except for this person, like he obviously had not thought out the consequences of everyone forgetting who Peter Parker is at that moment. And, you know, was was responding like I think a kid would respond. Hmm. Um, and I loved when I, like Doctor Strange 
totally owned Spider-Man, right? Like when it's like them one-on-one against each other at the beginning, like Spider-Man had no chance against him Mm -hmm. in that first battle. And then he like threw him into the astral plane. And like when his spidey sense was tingling, you could like see his spidey sense. Like, cause he's in the astral plane. It was cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe the, the my issue with Doctor Strange in that scene is like it was just too convenient for him to be casting the spell and then having Peter Parker be like, "Oh wait, not everybody should forget about me." Like the people who actually know me, who already knew that I was Spider Man, like they should not forget. Type of thing. It just seems like Doctor Strange being a man in his forties, maybe, who does this on a regular basis would ask that question of a 16 year old who's coming to him and asking him to like erase the memory of uh, 99.9999% of the planet. You know what I mean? Like if somebody came to you and said, I want everybody to forget who I am. If you were about to do that, wouldn't you ask, well, do you want your parents to forget who you are? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like that's, this seems like question number one. And so to me, that's what made Dr. Strange look silly is like, well, he had no. So here's the thing. Like, he wasn't asking them to have them forget who I am. He's asking them to forget that he's Spider Man, uh-huh. right? That's sure. a different question. It, it's very different to say, "Hey, make my parents forget who I am, and make my parents forget that I have this alter ego." Mm-hmm. I yeah. could see if Kyle said, "Like, make everyone forget that I'm Superman." I could, I could see not following that up with, "You mean everybody?" Dude, but if he said, cool. "Make me." F- <laughs> sorry right. well I, I think the other thing is the the request at the beginning of the movie is different than the request at the end of the movie exactly and, and I, so I think if the request at the end of the movie was made to Doctor Strange at the beginning Strange would do more of are you sure but yeah. the request at the beginning of the movie is I want them to forget that I'm Spider-Man not to jump to the end, but why wasn't this request the same as at the beginning of the movie? Why did everybody have to forget who Peter Parker was, period, versus forget that Peter Parker was Spider-Man? Because wouldn't that have also sent all the beams no. in the rift away? No, because the original spell was attracting everyone who knew Peter Parker. Parker. Not yes. that knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man. Everyone that knew Peter Parker. Uh-huh. So he had to make everyone forget Peter Parker, not that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. But why was everybody uh, attracted to Peter Parker if not because they knew he was Spider-Man? Well, yes. just because that's what that's how the spell went wrong, is that anyone that knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man was coming. Right. So you eliminate them knowing he's Spider-Man, and then it doesn't matter whether he's Peter Parker or not. This feels like the exact same thing yeah. to me. I, I'm going to be honest. I can't think of an explanation on my toes here. I, I can't either, <laughs> but I will say it made sense at the time. Yeah, right. I it, bought it. It made sense at the time as well until I started thinking about it. And then I was like, it feels a little convenient, which is fine. Yeah. I'm fine with movies that have this many moving pieces being convenient for the point of just giving you an experience. But um, again, this is all related to Doctor Strange stuff that just kind of felt weird to me. Uh-huh. Whenever they got into the Spider-Man stuff and they started bringing back old villains and then, of course, bringing back original Spider-People and then actually doing things with all of these people, or at least most of them, uh, I was impressed that the movie, one, went there and two, pulled it off on multiple levels. Um, So where were we in the timeline? Uh, Now we're to Doc Ock. We've, We've botched the spell. Doc Ock shows up. Yep. Uh, he has traveled through the rift, the timeline rift or something like that. And he's hunting down Spider-Man. He, uh, gets to him and then realizes it's not the same Spider-Man as what he remembers. Uh, meaning that he's from the, uh, Maguire verse of Spider-Man. Yeah. And, uh, and then, uh, who else shows up? Green Goblin. Well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Before Green Goblin. I don't care about Doc Ock from the Tobey Maguire movies. He's not right. a villain that I thought oh, a second thought about. Wow. But I loved him in this movie. He was awesome in this movie. Mm-hmm. 
if if you watch Spider Man Two, he is awesome in that also. Like, I, I think Zach needs to go back and watch yeah. those Tobey Maguire Spider Man because I think they are much better than what you gave him credit for on the first pass. <laughs> what this movie reminded me of was how incredible Alfred Molina and William Dafoe are as bad guys, and how mm. we have not gotten a bad guy that good in the in the MCU. Since who? Like Thanos is the only one. Yeah, I would say. But was... I, I'm also just talking like straight acting wise, like Willem sure. Dafoe doing. I mean, like like how he can change from Green Goblin to Norman Osmond and just like that. that, that I mean, that's all. That's not effects. That's just him acting, and he can mm-hmm. like pl- embody those two roles. Um, and then how um, Alfred Molina can just carry himself as Doc Ock. Like this is so believable. I wish I wish that MCU could get villains as good as that. And then like Willem Dafoe has been in um, not an MCU movie, uh, Aquaman. Right. And like that's a total yeah. phone in job right there when you when you see him <laughs> in that. Well, I mean, they're not asking him to do the same thing that he was doing in uh, in the in Spider-Man one. But like what will it take MCU to reach out to an accomplished actor and get the same performance out of them that Defoe and Molina gave us in those original Spider-Man movies? Or is it because um, these comic movies have become such cash-ins, like people realize, oh, I can just show up, phone it in, and still collect a huge paycheck? I don't, I don't get the vibe that people who show up to MCU movies are phoning it in. Do you feel like that, Zach? No, no I don't, can't think of anyone phoning it in. But I, don't I feel like they're they doing what's on the bigger. page. I, I feel know. like they're they're doing what's on the page. Yeah. When there's a dramatic movie, they get dramatic. But I don't think that's the MCU typically. Um, this movie went there, but most of them don't. Yeah. Don't go to the levels that this movie went to. I I just it, it was it was so awesome to see both of them back in mm-hmm. there. Even if Defoe at times was just like a CGI head was zipping around that screen towards the end. Yeah, they were good, and they also uh, just absolutely highlighted how lame some of the other Spider <laughs> <laughs> enemies are. I mean, like even Sandman, which is from the Maguire verse yeah. of Spider Man, like is just not a great enemy. A lizard, and, yeah, lizard from Amazing, and um, what was the other one? Oh, Electro, uh, Electro from the from the. I like Jamie Foxx though. Like I thought, you know, he didn't have a lot to do, but he, with what he had, he did all right. He he's, gave us that great Into the Spider Verse joke. Yeah, well, he's better in this than he was in Amazing Spider Man Two, in my opinion. What was the Spider Verse joke? Remember, he was like, "Oh, I always figured Spider Man was black," and they're like, oh. "Oh, maybe in another universe he was." Yes, right. and and I think that was also a joke because um. Childish Gambino, Donald Glover was trying to be Spider Man for Amazing Spider Man. Right, but they oh. already covered that a little bit in mm, Homecoming. Donald Glover's in one of these Tom he, Holland movies. I think he's in yeah. Homecoming. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a joke um, about it. Uh, th- the lizard villain is such a silly villain. Um, the uh, Electro, that was a silly villain. Um, the Sandman guy is a super memorable villain to me. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. for the amount he's, he's probably not in the movie that much um, in the original, but he uh, was super memorable. So when he showed up, I was like, Oh, that's kind of oh, yeah. fun. You know um, my hot take of the, I, I didn't care for Willem Dafoe in this movie. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love his green goblin. I it's, love that. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the most maniacal performances and characters in like any uh, superhero movie, so I I like that. What, what, yeah, why do you, like? why do you dislike the, it? Yeah. So uh, one, I don't care for the sound engineering. They they give him a special sound engineering that no one else mm-hmm. gets. You know, where it's just a very like full sound kind of a thing, and I I find it as gimmicky a little bit. And um, I think his mask is so silly. I'm glad that the, he he destroyed it really quickly because I just find that mask so silly. Sure. And then um, he's doing like a Jekyll and Hyde thing, right? Yeah. Where like he's sometimes he's this brilliant doctor who's actually a good guy. And sometimes he's just evil maniac. I mean, Jekyll and Hyde really was those two things, right? Whereas Green Goblin is 
always the maniacal goblin. He just oh. plays the sane person. Oh, that's an act the whole time. That's an act. No, no, no. Oh, I yeah, thought he's torn. Absolutely. I thought he's torn. No, no, that that was not an act. I, I, I thought that was really Norman Osborn and Green Goblin fighting because the same thing happens in the Sam Raimi one, right? He has that great mirror conversation where Norman Osborn is talking to Green Goblin in the mirror, or no, or maybe he's talking to the helmet. I can't remember. There's, but there's, there's times he talks to the helmet. That same. You get that same thing in the original. James, have you Spider-Man. seen the original Tobey Maguire movies? I have for sure. And you're right that there is some of that in the original. Um, but in this movie, the whole setup of them like going to Happy's apartment and getting those devices and stuff like that, that was not like a good guy, Norman Os- Osborn, that whole time. I, was, I think it was. I disagree. I, I disagree. Yeah. He reveals he killed the mask. Like, like, I convinced you to do this, and now we're not going to go through with it because no. this was my plan all along but he was saying like to spider-man as green goblin like watching you behind those norman osmond's sad eyes or something like that i really got mm. the impression that norman osmond was trying to like he was this sad like wanted to be a good character but then green goblin was th- there in the background and took over i totally agree with kyle See, to me, the the sign that it was um, one person fused together was when he broke the mask and then walked off and then they 180'd you where you're like, oh, he's a good guy now. And then you find out, no, he was a bad guy the whole time. But okay. I, this is not a hill I'll die on. I disagree. On. It might have right. been a completely, I might have completely misinterpreted all of that and I'm fine with it um, for sure. I could see how what you guys are saying as well. It's only ambiguous because of the performance. The <laughs> I think the performance, performance is pretty specific <laughs> that he's trying to be a good guy <laughs> and then he turns into a bad guy. Yeah, that hack Willem Dafoe. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I didn't terribly care for him um, in, in this role at all. But again, Doc Ock was awesome. So I loved him. So we get the villains. They're want to be healed but then right because that, that's the thing is if if spider-man he gets the the goober the thing mm-hmm. you know that that'll send them back but if they get sent back they're all dead in their respective universes yeah and so, spider-man doesn't want to send them to their automatic death he wants to save them mm-hmm, that's right by curing them okay, and it's amazing yeah. how like easy it is for these spider-man to like cure all the guys they've been fighting forever <laughs> That that was where I took my bathroom break right there. I'm like, all right, there's gonna talk afternoon. some mumbo jumbo about how we're gonna cure. I'm gonna use the bathroom, and and I came back and it was fine. I did not think, think I missed anything during that moment. Kyle, you're such an old man. You can't go to a movie anymore without going to the bathroom, can you? It's pathetic. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it, yeah. Like I don't know, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Zach, I know, I know you're the you're the youngest one here, so just uh, I am. Hold on, I'm the I'm the baby hey, of the podcast. Yeah, I'm the oldest one here, and I can hold it. So uh, yeah, this is, this is a Kyle thing. <laughs> I don't know about an age thing. <laughs> I mean, can, let's dive into this a little bit more, guys. Can we, can we yeah. go to WebMD? Let's and, do half an hour on. Uh, what do you guys think of my Kyle's idea? I've had this for a while. Control. Is it the back row of a theater should just be porta potties with like view view holes? Right, so you can be in the porta potty and still watch watch the movie. No, the smell. No, 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 no. Uh, advanced smell technology. No, 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 no. I don't want. I don't want somebody peeing next to me while I'm watching a movie. No, no, they'd be behind you because it'd be a row of porta potties. Okay, I don't want them behind me. No, <laughs> I don't want them anywhere near me I, while I, they're defecating. Okay. <laughs> I want if a movie is over two hours long, I want intermission. No, okay, that, no, it spoils happen, the momentum. Okay. Spoils the momentum. Oh yeah, that's right. So when Peter and MJ are talking about all the gloop glops they'll put into the thingamajig to cure them, there's the momentum's really strong right there. I'll tell you what: if they put intermissions back into movies, it would make it feel more like an event, and I think they would do better at the uh, uh, snack bar. Yeah, as I, well. I, I'm talking five minutes. Five minute intermission. Enough time. You get up, you do your th- what you gotta do, you're back in that seat. Like we're not talking 15 here. We're not gonna I don't wanna add on too much to these movies. 
it's crazy too. When I was looking at the schedule at the AMC that I saw the movie at, there was maybe 10 movies on the list, right? Mm-hmm. And six of them were two and a half hours plus. Yeah, everything is like everything why? is two and a half hours why? plus. The, this one was like a breezy <laughs> two hours and 16 minutes. Oh, really? I thought this one was over 2.30. I, I think it was less than 2.30. I was like, okay, at really? least this is not two and a half. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. was 2.28. Like, oh, 2 is it 28? 20? Okay, so, so less, less than, than 2.30, but from, not by much. I thought it was shorter than sure. that. Interesting. Um, I don't know why movies are so long, but I, I'm fine with, just give us a five-minute intermission. In a movie like this, you know people would ecstatically discuss what's going on. And then yeah. the movie would come back and it'd be awesome. I don't yeah, think that much fine. momentum would be killed. But um, um okay. Jacob Batalon plays Ned Leeds, uh, mm-hmm. Tom Holland's best friend. And I I just don't find him funny at all. I find at him all? to well, I don't know about all. At all is probably too far. Okay. Um, but I find him to be uh awkward in his delivery of lines. And uh I think he's like dead weight to the franchise, personally. <laughs> wow, this is a this is a harsh critique, man. <laughs> is it? No, no, Jeez. no, no. He's no, like not a, funny at all, and he's dead, dead weight, weight to the franchise. Like a happy weight. Um, but I would say I did enjoy the fact that he uh got to use Doctor Strange's little portal thing, and he used that, and it was integral to the plot. And I I liked that they gave him something to do besides say cheesy lines awkwardly. Like same for MJ, she just wasn't in danger for that third act. Like she and the best. She friend. was in danger. Well, for, when they had the portal open and the lizard guy ran through, I was like, "Oh, that's well, for, that's trouble." For that moment, she was in danger, but like she and Ned had a part to the plan. Yes, they were integral to the yeah. plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. all right. So, so they used the portal to find Spider Man. Oh, that. Oh wait, before that happens, dun, dun, and May. Uh-huh. And uh, may happen. You guys are jumping around the timeline now. Before we move on okay. from from all the villains, right? From all the various previous iterations of uh, Spider Man movies, uh, I'd like to say from a visual perspective, and I don't know if you guys got the same feeling, but I kind of feel like even the depiction of each villain felt like a little bit of an homage to the people who directed those movies. Like whenever Doc Green Goblins were and sure. Green Goblin was on screen, it wasn't an it wasn't a Raimi impression, but it felt like they were trying to give you the vibe of how those characters were depicted in they were Sam Raimi's movies. It's a little grayer with Mark Webb's version, just because I think they're less of a strong directorial vision. Um, in his case, plus we only got two out of three movies with him, but um. But I was kind of impressed that they even tried to do that. If they tried to do it, maybe they didn't, and I'm just reading into it. But I, I felt like there was a little bit of that. It sounds like Zach got a little bit of that too. I agree, especially with the goblin. Mm-hmm. Kyle, did you have any experience with, as far as that goes? I didn't pick up on that, but I'm not saying they didn't do it. I just didn't. I, you know, didn't notice it. I was in the bathroom. Sure, he went to the bathroom four times in this movie. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, so shortly after you get all these villains, uh, the other Spider-Men are introduced. And no, no, happens- before that happens. Before, before that happens. That. Okay, all right. He invites them all over to Happy's apartment. Right. And then they turn on him. Sure. And then Aunt May happens. Mm, yeah, this is the big mm. emotional moment. Aunt May so- ha- Oh, you're right. That does happen. Yeah. Before. So what, what was unique about this Tom Holland movie is all the other Spider-Man franchises, right? They, they lose someone super important to them, right? And like that's always been a huge part of Spider-Man, right? Like he um, does something that causes someone he cares about to die. And that like weighs on him. So he's this super kind of like naive, carefree guy that all of a sudden has like this huge emotional turmoil, you know? And the Tom Holland movies were kind of like the one that was just skipping the origin story and not doing that. Mm-hmm. And um, and then they did it in this movie mm-hmm. and it was super effective. It was because I was not expecting Aunt May to die for sure. Not expecting her to die. And um, and Tom Holland's like all of his acting related to that 
was so good. He he could he had chops. He pulled it off. It was good in like a this is good in a superhero movie. <laughs> no, I thought it was better than that. When when it, he is um talking to the other spider man about his loss or whatever, it was like, yeah, it was fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> and she I I enjoyed it too. I thought it was better than it should have been. But I don't think it compares to like uh I don't know, Leonardo DiCaprio in a Scorsese movie or anything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's no uh gangs in New York, that's for sure. That's what I mean. Like he's not gonna get an Oscar nomination for acting for this because it's just not that kind of movie. Now it's a movie that has surprisingly emotional scenes in it performed well. But the rappers are just silly, and so you know. It's better than what it should be, and that's why it worked. And at, were any and, of you expecting Aunt May to die? I no. was not until she was talking to Peter and delivered the great responsibility, blah 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 thing. And I was like, "Oh, this is happening. This is goodbye, Aunt May." Really? Even then, I didn't. It wasn't until she collapsed that I was like, "Oh, they're gonna kill her." Well, someone who just binged on Spider-Man over the weekend, I'm like, okay, you, you give the line, then you die. That's how it goes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. I did not make that connection, but it's absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm surprised because I think she is one of the pieces that separates this Spider-Man from the others. Like Aunt May right. just has never been a strong piece of these stories she's certainly in it she's in it a lot in the first spider-man um but the rest of them she's a supporting character that comes in and out whereas in these movies um they haven't necessarily made her a plot device but she's definitely around Mm -hmm. in these movies and in this one she's around a lot and they spent a lot of time making you um comfortable with her that she that you like her she's being supportive of him and what's going on in his life, the crazy, the craziness of his life. And they definitely play her as the cool aunt who is being cool to a John Favreau uh, version of happy that like is um, also nerdy, like surprisingly nerdy type of thing. Like they, they play his house as like the ultimate bachelor pad, you know, man child type thing. And um, I think that works. And, uh yeah i i enjoyed her i enjoyed the spin on aunt may that this series gave her i thought it was a little bit eye roll inducing in the first movie honestly this movie and this is more of a broader thought a lot of the stuff that annoys me about the first two they brought around in this one yeah (laughs) so i think if i were to rewatch the first two they would play very differently knowing what's ahead uh, than what my first time watch on the first two was because the Aunt May thing like was kind of like, why are you making this change? Like it doesn't add anything. You're just being different to be different. You're being different because you want to make Aunt May hot. Like that's what I had in my mind. And that might've been why she was, she was Marissa Tomei in the first two movies, but in this movie they made it okay (laughs) because it made sense to me. Uh, and, uh, I don't know if that was always in the plan, but if it was, it worked, it worked. You gotta trust the um, plan. Did people sob in your movie theater while this was happening? I don't think so. I I, definitely heard crying. I I was in the bathroom when she died, so I missed that. (laughs) (laughs) Are you serious? No, I'm joking. (laughs) No, I was going to (laughs) say, um, I don't, I, I heard Maybe some sniffling. I, I wasn't hearing like bawling or anything like that, but I mean, people weren't making a scene and like falling in the eye. Yeah, there wasn't fainting going on. There's wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, but there was <laughs> definitely loud uh, sniffling and lots of rustling, I would say. Yeah, a lot of uncomfortable. Of yeah, yep. Um, this movie got me three times. This was one of them. How about you guys? Was the sobbing you heard your own? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's it was very In fact, loud. I don't know and... if anybody else was crying cuz my eye was so loud. So. <laughs> yeah, I, like I never cried during this movie, but I definitely missed it up. And this was one of those moments where like I I I felt the emotion. 
Well, James, I can't wait to hear what the other two were. And then we still haven't gotten to my favorite scene of, of 2021. Oh, all yeah. right. So let's, let's, let's time for an intermission. <laughs> yes. Bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. All right. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, what, what happens next now that Toby Maguire? Yeah. Uh, no, now Andrew, Andrew Garfield. Garfield. Okay. Andrew yeah. Garfield. Yeah. They, yeah. they, uh, yeah, Anchor uh, opens up a portal. Anchor, and, jeez, and and you see Spider Man, but with those big eyes, and you know it's Andrew Garfield, mm-hmm. and he comes through the portal. And what do you guys think of that scene? Because I know neither of you are probably Andrew Garfield Spider Man fans, right? In general, before this movie, is that correct? Oh no, uh, incorrect. Oh, uh, you're an I Andrew mean, Garfield fan. He was my second favorite Spider Man, <laughs> and I certainly enjoy Andrew Garfield. I always thought he was better than the movies he was in when it came to Spider-Man. I gotcha. Like they didn't really know what to do with a second Spider-Man franchise other yeah. than like introduce new villains. And I don't, I don't know what they were trying to do with those first two, to be honest. They were trying to um, save their property and keep their true. rights. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I, th- and I thought, I know Andrew Garfield. I mean, there's an amazing photo of Andrew Garfield as a kid dressed as Spider-Man. Like he really, oh, really? Was, he really was into being Spider-Man. And I think he was the best thing about those amazing Spider-Man movies, uh, of which they weren't very good, unfortunately. And so again, kind of how I feel like this movie made things from homecoming and far from home better. This movie made things from Andrew Garfield's movies better for me. Like he was, uh, really good in this and they gave him actually things to do like yeah. he doesn't have his own subplot but he had flashes of his own subplot but that only makes sense if you know his first couple of movies it's kind of cool that uh they did not just give these people a cameo uh-huh. and have it like yoda showing up in in star wars you know and he gives a speech and then you never see him again it was they were a part of the second half of this movie. And I yeah. thought that was so great. And, you know, Andrew Garfield never got to finish his trilogy. Right. And it mm-hmm. felt like unresolved. And um, and Tobey Maguire's third movie is is generally thought of as his, his worst one, you know. So both of them kind of ended favorite. on this sour note. And uh, I felt like both of them got to, like, come back and and kind of resolve things and and they did a great job of it i thought yeah and they did it without like directly having to resolve things you know what i mean like they didn't it was subtle right it was subtle it was like it 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 makes sense if you know the history behind Mm -hmm. those movies if you know that like the third spider-man movie was not a huge success and probably killed the franchise for toby mcguire or if you know that andrew garfield was cut short by marvel saying we want spider-man in the mcu (laughs) type of thing um you know those things then you know the small little bits that they threw in where it was like okay we're acknowledging this and we're actually giving the character a character moment to uh, bring it around without being overbearing for the plot in general um i I, yeah I, i liked andrew garfield coming back and i thought he kind of outshined everybody Spider-Man wise in the last. I'm such an movie. Andrew Garfield fan. I, I just really like him in things. I, He's he, so likable. He looks so much like Ben Schwartz, John Ralphio to me mm-hmm. that there was moments where I, I was thinking to myself, what if Ben Schwartz was Spider-Man? <laughs> like would, would that, would he, would, would he be any different than, Andrew Garfield in that yeah. take on it. So yeah, because Andrew does, Garfield is earnest. True. Yeah, and and that is not John Ralphio. Well, no, no, I don't want John Ralphio as Spider Man. I want Ben Schwartz as Spider Man. Spider Man. <laughs> uh, there, there is that great scene, kind of back to what you were saying, James, where Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are talking, and it, like the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man kind of says like, I'm not good enough. Like, you know, I, I'm not as good as you guys, which is, which again felt meta in that sense of like the, there's a lot of meta talk, right? Right. Kind of the, what people view as the inferior of the three Spider-Men. But then, you know, to hear Tom McGuire say like, no, like affirm yourself, you are amazing. And like, 
Which you is know, funny because he was the amazing. He was amazing. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I, I just thought yeah. like, that was that was neat. Um, but yeah, like we we also get then Tobey Maguire shows up, who is, so Andrew Garfield he's almost forty years old now. Mm-hmm. Tobey Maguire's got to be almost fifty, right? Because wasn't he like thirty when he? I mean, Andrew Garfield was twenty nine when he played Spider Man. Wasn't Tobey Maguire pushing thirty when he played Spider Man? Toby Maguire ago. is currently 46. 46. Okay, yeah. So like I mean the, these guys they have young faces so you can't quite pin their ages but like Toby Maguire oh. is definitely looking older but it was kind of cool to see like the elder statesman Spider-Man um, of the three of them. Yeah, and I feel like they played them as if time had moved on. Like yes. if you actually took yeah. like the chronological timeline of the movies, I kind of felt like they aged them appropriately based on where they fell in the normal timeline of the release of the movies. I, this was my favorite Tobey Maguire uh, Spider-Man movie, mm-hmm. like perf- from a Tobey Maguire performance. I loved adding a little maturity to his character, mm-hmm. like some like worldly wisdom, you know, kind of like he's, he's been through it and like done some, some self work and therapy and stuff like that. I liked that Tobey Maguire character. Whereas I, I just never connected with the the old ones. But this one, I was like, okay, now I'm on board. I'm I, I'm totally on board to watch the originals again. Um, but because I did enjoy him in this. Yeah, I mean, I I think he he definitely has a different level of perspective that they gave his character in this one than he has in the first three. But I think the kind of aloofishness is played for charm in this one. And uh, in the originals, uh, it's played for angst a little bit. And maybe maybe that's the difference in the aloofishness. Because there was a little bit of aloofishness in this, but it seemed intentional in this movie. You know what I mean? Sure. Like Sometimes he'd play dumb so these younger guys could figure it out for themselves. It felt like <laughs> in this one. Can, can I ask a question about a scene that I felt like I was missing a point? Like maybe other people had more knowledge and so they got an extra bit of the joke sure the part where they're like uh cracking each other's backs oh yeah was there was there subtext to that there, that i didn't get there is yep what is it absolutely uh correct me if i'm wrong james but toby mcguire mm-hmm. hurt his back making spider-man 3 and that's one of the reasons he they did not make a spider-man 4 with him i think mostly right and i don't remember the exact details <laughs> But mostly right that they're Toby McGuire definitely hurt his back while making a Spider-Man movie and it made it put into question whether there would be a sequel. Yeah. I don't remember if that happened between two and three or between three and a possible four. But like I said, mostly right. I just don't remember the details yeah. to be able to okay. confirm it. But With, yeah, there's out- definitely a meta joke there because if you were way into Spider-Man at the time, it was a big deal that he might not come back. Okay. And then he did. Without knowing any of that, that scene was odd. <laughs> really? Did, I did not know what was happening in that scene. I was like, it, it felt like there was like some chemistry between them. You know, like this was their meat cute in a way. Oh, you, you've never had a dude crack your back? Not someone I just met. Hmm. Who well, like is dressed like me and is me. Never, <laughs> is me. Is me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe that's why they all got along so well. It's because they were each other. No. You did get so I think it's kind of like a popular movie trope to like if you meet your doppelganger, like you hate them. And I've always disagreed with that. I think I love that these guys met each other and they're like, yeah, we're instant best friends because I think that is the case. (laughs) Well, it's because they're the same person, but they've lived different lives so they can. I, I think there's enough different about them where it's not like meeting your exact copy of yourself, but then they can also because they are so singular as being like these masked superheroes, then when they can meet themselves somewhere else, they can then like Andrew Garfield said, I've always wanted brothers. Like Mm -hmm. it's less like meeting your twin and more like meeting. I think a brother in that sense that they, they share this bond of being Spider-Man Spider-Man. Yeah. (laughs) Of having that bond of having the, that burden Spider-Man. And then, you know, especially for the Tom Holland one, he was the one he was struggling in this movie. And the other two have already had that struggle, so they're able to guide him and help him come out of the darkness. Yeah. 
One of my favorite things about this movie, and I think we touched on it a little bit, is like I'm just super impressed that they got all of these people back. Like they they got all the villains, mm-hmm. the, at least the ones you'd you'd care to see, even some of the ones you don't want to care to see. Uh, they got those. They got them back. They got the original people who played them. Uh, they got the original Spider Man, and they didn't use any of it for like cheap thrills or like passing anything like they yeah. actually use these yeah. people and they gave them their own little things to do. Agreed. And I think that was the difference between um, this feeling like just kind of cheap fan service and like, just like, I don't know, buzz bin type stuff instead of actual uh, affecting of, of the movie itself. And they actually use these people. And then not only did they use these people, but I think, it came th- it came through to me that they thought through like what do people who are really into these things what what do they want out of these characters not necessarily like what do they want to happen to them what was unresolved and what can we resolve for them without bogging down what's going on in the tom holland version of this movie and um i think they did that really well like the the economy of storytelling they accomplished with just Andrew Garfield diving to catch Mary Jane Uh is crazy. I mean, you really have to trust your audience to remember (laughs) what happened to that guy in that movie uh, to make that like anything other than just a, an action sequence. And there were a couple times in the movie where they pulled things off like that. And um, I think that takes a lot of trust to just kind of not handhold people and and also to really think through like why people like superhero movies, why they like Spider-Man movies, why they had problems in the past and how can we not necessarily make it 100 percent better, but at least make it okay that some of those things stumbles in the past have happened. Um, Not even stumbles like the Gwen Stacy, Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man moment that is mirrored in this movie. That w- that's one of the best things about the amazing Spider-Man series is the fact that they went there with Gwen Stacy in that movie. And so since he never got the third, they give him the hero moment in this one to reclaim what happened in amazing Spider-Man two. And um, yeah, there's just a couple of examples. I think that is the difference between uh, just cash grab and like, cash grab with a purpose <laughs> i don't know they, they actually ca- they actually care there's no it's not cynical they actually care about these stories yeah and right and no one felt like like none of the actors felt like, like they showed up for a day did a cameo and then were not in the rest of the movie yeah i mean i'm wondering i know they money talks but i'm wondering if they would have been as invested they definitely wouldn't have if you were an actor and they're like, we'll give you a million dollars, show up for a day. You'd be like, what can, if you're Tobey Maguire, you'd be like, yes, I'm sure. Doing that. But I'm sure it's great to walk in and be like, yeah, and we're actually going to give you something to do. Mm-hmm. And there's going to, you know, be, it's like legacy. It's a legacy thing. Right. Like we exactly. are, you get to reprise your character that yeah. you had played 15 years ago. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we're getting close to my favorite scene in the movie. Zach, have we gone okay. to yours yet? We have. James just mentioned it, so let me get into it. Okay. The scene where Andrew Garfield saves MJ. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely got me. Um, so I'll set it up a little bit for people that haven't seen the movie and you're listening anyway, or maybe you didn't even catch what happened because it goes by very quickly. Uh, but MJ gets knocked off from a very from the Statue of Liberty, right? And she is falling to her death. Tom Holland goes after her, right? He's going to save her. And he uh y- you can absolutely see it play out in front of you. He's going to shoot his web to try to catch her and she's going to die exactly like when Stacy died in uh the Andrew Garfield movie. And uh, Tom Holland is going to make the same mistake Andrew Garfield made. And you in that split second, you're like he, MJ's gonna die uh-huh. because Tom Holland is gonna make the same mistake, and he is saved from that fate by uh, by the goblins thing hitting him or whatever, and he's knocked out of the way. Right, 
and then um, it's like this moment where MJ and and Tom Holland, because at this point, you, you Tom Holland like can't take another hit. He just lost his Aunt May. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, he's saved from making that mistake, and then Andrew Garfield sees what's happening, and he dives after MJ, and he has now learned because of what happened to the person he loved not to make that same mistake. So instead he waits till he can grab MJ and then he shoots his web and saves her life. And, and for him, he lost his MJ. He even calls her his, M- his MJ in the movie. Um, but he was able to save Tom Holland's MJ. And that moment of like uh redemption for me. Oh man. I instantly started crying and I was probably still crying a minute later. Like during an action scene. <laughs> so you were like actually at, crying. This was not no, like misting. This no, was no. Like- actual crying. <laughs> like and in the middle of this action scene, just like tears flowing down just because that that moment of like redemption for Andrew Garfield's story. Right. Mm-hmm. Like he had to go through something that was just unspeakably difficult for him um, in order to be the person in that moment who could save Tom Holland from the same fate, save MJ from the same fate. You know what I mean? I just found incredibly beautiful. And yeah, I, was like, I that also was awesome. love in that scene, like the logistics of the storytelling, like you just said, were beautiful. And also just like Andrew Garfield as a person, as an actor who I don't know other than in interviews and the roles I've seen him in, but seems like a nice guy. Seems like he, it would have been cool if he got a third shot at a, a Spider-Man yeah. movie, right? Had got a, got to finish out his own trilogy got to got to have a hero moment after the kind of dark high point of Spider-Man 2, Amazing Spider-Man 2. It didn't get that as an actor, and yet here he gets it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even like from a meta perspective, seeing the actor get to have the hero moment opposite the worst moment his character had in the second movie, which everybody hated. Uh I I love that element of it as well. Didn't make me cry though. I did think uh his Andrew Garfield's face after he realizes he saved his MJ, yeah, was probably the best acting in the movie. Yeah, that, it was that look good. He had was awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Because you could read all of that history in that split second mm-hmm. uh, that they yeah. give him on screen. No, I mean perfect a- editing, really, because that entire story that we just talked about mm-hmm. was probably done in in twenty seconds, if that. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, it was super fast. My favorite scene and possibly one of my top scenes of the year is just the three of them talking before the big final action sequence. When they're on the Statue of Liberty, they're 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 setting up, and then uh one character says, one of the Spider Men says, like, you know, who's the craziest villain you fought? And they just start like, trading stories back and forth, and you know, Tommy Wire is like, Oh, I fought an alien, and then <laughs> Tom Holland's like, well, I found alien in space. And then Garfield's like, I, well, I didn't get to fight an alien. <laughs> and <they're> like, <laughs> just, just having the three of them, you know, d- just have this conversation and be like, relate to each other by telling their 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 war stories was I, I yeah. thought it was a great moment. And I I, I I was enjoying hanging out in that conversation with them. Yeah. And yeah. like one and of that them was can another shoot organic moment. webs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. They're talking about the, like did you run out? Where does it come from? <laughs> so yeah. I'm that really- was another meta moment too where it was kind of like you could kind of see these three guys hanging out like in the back of an awards show ceremony or something like that and having like a similar discussion mm-hmm. about yeah. what they've been able to do in their versions of the Spider-Man movies. I don't know. There was a lot of meta like I just yeah. The discussions were circular in like <laughs> weird ways that made sense. It it worked uh, though. It didn't it didn't feel too winky mm-hmm. to the audience. Like yeah. it felt like genuine conversations three different Spider-Man would have each other with each other. But it was also fun as an audience member. For sure. I feel like they gave us enough of that too. Like there was enough moments with the Spider-Man interacting with each other that by the end of the movie, when there's actual conflict as far as like how far one of the Spider-Man will go, um, it made sense to me. Like mm-hmm. they they did a good job of delineating the lines between Tom Holland's the inexperienced guy who needs help. Toby Maguire's the experienced guy, you know, kind of the the goofy sage. And Andrew Garfield is kind of the 
I don't know. Insecure. Quite insecure. Yeah, yeah, maybe insecure version, you know, in his mid thirties and just not certainly a good Spider Man, but like ha- has been left dangling in life. I don't know. Something like that. I don't know. Um I feel like they define those pretty well in this movie. Okay. So uh are we fast forwarding to big villain fight basically i mean we've already talked about at least one scene from that fight mm-hmm. i'm not sure there's much in that fight left other than the fight ultimately comes down to uh green goblin versus tom holland spider-man green goblin definitely in tom holland's spider-man's uh targets because he's the guy who killed aunt may right so you kind of have um this set up in a lot of Spider-Man movies where your villains killed somebody that Spider-Man loves. And so he is left with this quandary of, is he going to actually murder somebody in revenge or is he going to incapacitate them because they're a criminal type of thing? Uh, which is kind of like the Superman code, I guess that you're not supposed to kill people. You're just supposed to stop them from doing harm. Um, and, uh, yeah. How did you guys feel about how that played out in the end? I liked it. Yeah, I think it played out as I expected it to. Um, um, this movie was not going to go too off script with what Spider-Man is supposed to do. Because these movies mm-hmm. are still based on a source material, a comic book, and they all have these common themes. So I was, I was happy with the resolution they took, but not surprised by how that turned out. Mm-hmm. Like, like, yeah, the, I would have been May very di- surprised me, even though it's expected. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Zach. You just stop. You stop expecting it with yeah. Tom Holland. You thought yeah. we were past that. Uh, I'd be very disappointed if he had killed uh, Green Goblin. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that would have been a pretty dark ending. I would <laughs> say if he had actually killed him, and they had at least two guys to choose from to stop him, who have in theory already learned that lesson. Mm-hmm. So uh, it made sense to me. I, I do think though, if they had chinsed out on the scenes of the three Spider-Men interacting, it wouldn't have been near as effective when one of them steps in to say, that's not the direction you should be going. Um, I thought that worked very well. No, it, it would have uh, felt like the Yoda moment. Like Zach said, like all of a sudden one pops up and says, stop, don't do this. Right. Yeah. And at that point, it's just a cheap pop as opposed to something that's earned mm-hmm. on some level. Um, I also love that they were fighting on the Captain America mask. I thought that was a cool callback. Like, yeah. you can't have Captain America in these in this universe anymore, or at least Captain America as we knew it uh, in this universe. I thought it was just a cool way to loop things in without having to have other characters in the movie. Uh, and um, the other, the second time I got emotional, I got to admit, is when the three Spider-Men hug. Not full tears, but misty. I was just like, I, th- I think it, was, it wasn't like a, I'm so sad. It was like a relief mm-hmm. misting or like a, I don't know. I think I, I feel like the second half of this movie, even though I knew the first two guys were going to be in this movie, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, I think I was just constantly like, I can't believe they're doing this. Did, it's just like the whole movie seemed like just, it's such a weird world we live in <laughs> that this type of movie exists, right? Where they're like, like how does Marvel have the huevos rancheros to be like, we're going to make a movie and we're str- we struck a deal with Sony that nobody thought could ever be struck and now three movies in not only are we taking spider-man but we're gonna like mine the original two spider-man movies spider-man franchises we're gonna try to right a bunch of wrongs we're gonna get entire casts back from those movies and we're gonna pull off a new story in two hours and 28 minutes (laughs) i mean it's crazy. Like from a logistical standpoint, I know these are the guys that did Endgame, and I always say that about the, that movie. But this is like not Endgame. That is still the top logistical movie of all time, in my opinion. But this is one step below. It's just crazy that they did this, and 
happened to pull it off in a way that doesn't feel like just a cash grab. I don't know. And all of that was represented with three Spider-Man hugging on screen for me. Like that was the moment where I was like, they've a hundred percent pulled this off. <laughs> I, everything that I would have a problem with, they've covered here for the most part, other than Dr. Strange being a little goofy. That's my, <laughs> that's my only complaint. <laughs> I don't nice. know. How'd you guys feel about that? Did it do anything for you or you're like, eh, whatever. They hugged. I, I liked it. It yeah. didn't do anything for me. But I mean, I, you I, know, I, Marvel pretty much prints money at this point. So yeah, they have the capital to make these things happen. As, as long as there is the people out there have a dollar amount, they can make it happen. But what would be them? It's kind of just what, amazing that all these people still act, that they're still in shape. That they still and they still care to be in this too. They're still alive, you know what I mean? Like it's it's crazy. I mean, it's that, only been twenty years. No, it's not crazy. <laughs> not that they're alive. <laughs> that Andrew Garfield is alive and acting. <laughs> like, I believe Tobey Maguire. Is I don't a, know. Isn't he? Like Can you believe 50? that Tom Holland is still in shape and acting? <laughs> well, Tom Holland, of course. But I'm just saying, it's a. Uh, you mean Tobey Maguire? You're again, only talking Endgame about Tobey is a bigger logistical. I mean, Endgame. A year or two later, that wouldn't have been the truth. Like Chadwick Boseman passed away after Endgame. It, like all signs say, he filmed Endgame sick. So it's not impossible for that to be the case, for sure, with completely yeah. healthy people. And now you're talking 20 years later when it comes to that um, that Spider-Man one cast. 17 later for this for the Spider-Man two cast. So, was Tobey Maguire in uh, Into the Spider Verse? No, I don't know. I don't think so. I um, thought he was the voice of Spider Man. No, the voice of Spider Man is one of the oh, who's the Chris, the uh, the non Marvel Chris who's down in Marvel. Okay, um, Chris Pine. Yeah, Chris Pine is the first Spider Man, and then Jake Johnson is the second Peter Parker Spider Man. Gotcha. Okay, right. I want to. When can we talk Spider Verse? Because that is the elephant in the room for me with this movie. We we don't have to talk about it yet. We can finish talking about. Um, if you Far have from, something deep and related to Far From Home, uh, or, as far as Spider Verse goes, I say say it now. Okay. When we go to get into quick rank, I just want like quick. Okay. <laughs> Here's my biggest issue with this movie: is this has already been done with Into the Spider Verse and Into the Spider-Verse did it better. Now, it's different because this movie's bringing in actual actors from different franchises. So, like, logistically, I totally get what you're saying, James. Like, Mm -hmm. you can't compare the logistics of Spider-Verse, which is an animated movie, bringing in odd, you know, Spider-Man iterations versus this. But just the idea of a Spider-Man being mentored and meeting other spider people, I think Into the Spider-Verse did it better and is a it's just a better movie than this one. And that I think without Into the Spider-Verse, I would like this movie more because I'm like, wow, I can't believe like this is so cool. The fact that we have all this intersecting of these, you know, different universal characters, but I've seen this before and I've seen it better. So Hearing you say that, uh, I feel like a, a sentiment like that leads to this thinking that, like, you know, we already have one of these, so we don't need the other. And I just don't see it like that at all. Because I, I think, I mean, sure, they deal with having multiple Spider-Man in a movie, but they're so uh, different and both worthwhile that I see no need to compare the two. Or put them in the same spectrum of like, this one's better, this one's worse. If but, I could only have one, I'd want this one. But we are going to rank them. Like, we are putting in the same spectrum. No, no, we're going to rank them as movies. But I, for what, I, what I'm saying is, um, the fact that Into the Spider-Verse has uh, multiple Spider-Men in it, to me, does not take away a single thing from the fact that this movie had multiple Spider-Men into it. I... Yeah, because they're just so, they, they are multiple Spider Man, yeah. but they're very different multiple Spider Man. Like multiple Spider Man in this movie are literally actors from other movies. Oh yeah, no, no. I, I like I, whereas I'm not, multiple Spider Man in Spider Verse, like, yeah, 
were like they're just uh, random things that we just yeah random things we had no context time. for yeah mm-hmm. which I enjoyed but just on a very different spectrum as what I enjoyed this movie on. That being said, like one I enjoy more than the other, but they're different spectrums of enjoyment. I watched Spider Verse two nights ago mm-hmm. um, with my son who loved it, which is it was it was a great experience and. Into the Spider Verse is a five star. It, it's a perfect movie for me. Yeah, it's five star for I think all three of us. It's yeah. five star for okay. me as well. All right, perfect. And this okay. one wasn't. This one. So wasn't. that should so. tell you something. <laughs> but this one, as a odd uh, capper to three trilogies, <laughs> amazingly, kind of works as that. And so comparing one to the yeah. other there are similarities mm-hmm. but they're just two totally different yeah destinations james Even that's a great way to say it is that this is like the third it's like the capper to three trilogies at once that's impressive it's crazy True. and it's but they even yeah. tried it and it kind of worked mostly it worked, worked yeah it's yeah. spider verse is like us i think it was a surprise for all of us i don't think any of us were expecting anything from spider verse Spider Verse is a great standalone movie. You yep. could have never seen a Spider Man movie, and you could enjoy Agreed. Spider Man. Yep. yep. Totally this agreed. movie, I would say, you have to have somewhat of a passing knowledge to get the vast majority out of what's in Spider Man No Way Home. It, yeah. If I had not read the Wikipedia plot summary to Amazing Spider Man Two, I would have totally missed out on the Andrew Garfield moment that was Zach's favorite. So yeah, yeah, yeah need that. I was debating whether to like tell you no, you have to watch that movie you know, to, to get that context just for that scene alone. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then I was wondering if that was just a non scene for you or what? No, no, be just because I had, so I saw amazing Spider-Man and right. They, they bring Gwen Stacy and I know enough about Spider-Man comics that Gwen Stacy falls to her death at some point and can't be saved. So I kind of figured that probably happened in Spider-Man or amazing Spider-Man Two. Mm-hmm. read the plot synopsis. Okay. That did happen. So then Th- that scene then in this one, uh, No Way Home, did register for its impact. Like, even though I, ha- I didn't see the actual moment that in the first movie, I still cool. I got the context of it. Cool. I think there's one more major thing in the movie. Uh, it's that uh, we mentioned it before. Uh, Doctor Strange, or Sp- uh, Toby Mc... Mm. Tom Holland <laughs> asks Doctor Strange to wipe everybody's memory of Peter Parker as a human being across yeah. all universes. And Dr. Strange does it. And then you kind of have this little epilogue where uh, MJ, well, before he does it, there's an emotional moment between MJ Ned, right? That's the sidekick's uh-huh. name and Tom Holland's character. And, and that there's me. a big, that was my, there's a big yeah. romantic kiss between Zendaya and Tom Holland. And, Real life um, couple. Are they a real life couple? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Uh, I'm into it. And uh, that's creepy. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm into that. <laughs> yeah. No, I like young love. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep going. <laughs> so, uh, Kyle, you said that got you. You missed it up on that one as well. Well, it was it was the moment before. It was when. Mm-hmm. Peter Parker, Tom Holland was realizing that he has to like, no one's going to know who he is and everyone who knows him is going to forget him. And I don't know. I just started thinking like, what if it happened to me? Like, what if my son forgot who I was? Like, how terrible would that be to like go through life knowing that there are people you love that no longer love you back. They don't even know who you are. And that's just, Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's, that's a, that's a heavy thing to to think about even for a silly (laughs) superhero movie. So when Tom Holland and Zendaya were making out on screen, you were like, man, it would suck if my son didn't know who I was. Yeah. When I see young love, (laughs) I I think of my child. (laughs) Zach, what was your response to that? That scene? Um, Were you touched by it? I, you know, at first I was annoyed because like he had promised them that like, hey, next time you're going to get someone to forget us, like at least run it by us first, you know, workshop Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't do that again. At least he told him this time. And then I was also a little annoyed that he didn't say, okay, so you're going to forget me. So tell me something that like no one knows so that I can tell you this thing and then you'll 
like no to believe me. You know what I mean? Like tell me something about like your secret password, blah, blah, blah. You know, he should have done that, but he didn't do that. Hmm. And she didn't let him say, I love you. I was like, just let him say, I love you. And then say it again later. <laughs> I think, I think the so kiss I, said, I love you. Yeah. That, I, that I mean, yeah, obviously he loved, no, obviously he loved her. You know what I mean? But he was going to say it and she stopped him. Maybe his love language is not physical language. Maybe his love language is something else. No, no. He I thought was, she was going to say it. She, she, right. But I thought she was saying that because she wanted, she knew that him saying it, she would just forget it. And so she wanted him to hold it in for, you know, farther down the line. In the next one, he gets to actually say it to her finally. Why not right. both? In the, in the new life, because he does promise them, which he goes back on. That he's going to find them and, you know, make them realize that they he, do know him. And he and goes then, up back on that. Yeah. He goes back on that. Well, I mean, um, that, I, that's his first attempt at it. Like, I expect there to be some spits and starts to this. You're not going to like first time you see these people big. Like, All right, let's do this. I got my letter. I'm ready to go. Well, it's going to work. Well, ho- no, hold on. Hold on. He didn't he didn't get gun shy and decide like, oh, I don't have the guts to do this right now. He he right. he made the hero choice and saying like if they know who I am, it puts them in danger. And so to to protect them, I'm going to stay out of their lives. Mm-hmm. That's what happened in that scene. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which is the, the which is what Tobey Maguire decides at the end of Spider Man One, I think it is. No, she um, no no no. Uh, MJ knows. Yeah, but he walk. He doesn't want to date her anymore. He walks away from. Her. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't remember if the Andrew Garfield ones ever go through a moment like that. Uh, they probably do. I th- I just watched that. I feel like Gwen Stacy knew. I don't remember. I don't. You know, I I, I literally just watched that movie. And <laughs> it doesn't matter. Already, but it's so. another Spider Man thing that they hadn't uh, injected into these movies, and then they injected it mm-hmm. right here at the end of a trilogy. Uh, which I liked. And there's going to be three I, more. Yeah, I like that they came around to all the Spider-Man tropes eventually, even if they didn't cram them all into the first movie like they did in some of the other ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I have other things that are inconsequential that maybe we could pop through. Um, I have a couple of things too. Yeah. The youth pastor joke was probably the biggest laugh mm-hmm. my theater had. Can you remind me who they said was dressed like a youth pastor? I just don't remember. Toby Maguire. Okay. Andrew Garfield said that Toby Maguire and was dressed like a youth pastor. That was in reference to his Spider-Man 3 costume he was doing like dancing down the street. No, no I, think I think just it how just he was dressed. was a reference to him being older and oh, how he was dressed. <laughs> okay, I, I, I thought that was a reference to in Spider-Man 3 when he's like emo haircut in that black suit walking down the street. No, no, I think it's that he was not like, a youth pastor's dress. I, I don't. I, how many youth pastors do I hang out with? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I think it was half a joke how he was dressed and half a joke that he was like 20 years older than the okay. teenagers yeah. in the room. Okay. Type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't grow up in the world of youth pastors, so um, I found my own joke out of it. <laughs> the scene where the rift is opening at the end, Doctor Strange is trying to hold it together. Um, it was pretty awesome, like all the the spider-man villains that were like in the you could see like uh silhouettes of mm-hmm. in the rift it was oh uh, you picked out people i all that went oh, over yeah. my head i can't wait to like see a youtube video where people pick apart everybody that's in those, oh yeah i'm sure rifts I'm because sure. Can they're you name all just one marching saw? sure uh, we, we you definitely saw rhino that's the one you i saw, saw. scorpion mm-hmm. rhino's at least been in the series but like scorpion was in there kraken um trying to remember others there were a bunch of them yeah there, there were there were a lot of villains up there uh another thing i have on my spoilers is that venom the tom hardy version <laughs> of venom shows up in the mid credit stinger yeah which i thought was kind of genius because it's basically like even if okay question for you guys does this mean even though venom you know he kind of dusts there at the end so He's from an alternate universe. Otherwise, he wouldn't have dusted. Uh, does that mean that he'll never be in these movies again and it was a one-time thing? Yes. So here is the theory that my... I, I went with two friends, um, and one of them okay. had this theory. So at the for, first thing, before that scene, 
we were talking during the credits and mm -hmm. um one of the guys said oh like what about venom did he get sucked into this and then that med mid, mid credit scene happened it was like perfect timing mm -hmm. and we're like oh he did okay and then you see at the end of that scene after he gets dusted away that a little bit of the symbiote is on the is on the bar right that's true um and then my friend was saying that um flash who you know in, in this one he's played by tony revolori he's kind of the the live streaming kid mm -hmm. apparently in the in some iteration of the comics flash becomes venom for a while hmm. so they're possibly setting up um him to become venom because they've obviously introduced the symbiote into now the mcu tom holland universe so i think mm -hmm. we will see a venom but i don't think we're going to see tom hardy venom again wait i'm confused flash is in this no, no, yeah. no. His name is like Flash Johnson or something like that. N not the Flash. Isn't Flash a DC? Yeah, yeah. Character? No, his his the guy's name is Flash. Like his. Okay. I I think his actual. I remember in um Amazing Spider Man, he, Flash is also in it. His real name is like Leonard or something like that. But his Flash is in the original Spider Man too with Tobey Maguire. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he he's like the bully. He's, he's in, in all. all of them. He's so. a classic Spider Man high school bully. Yep. He is that the one that like, writes the book? Yeah. Yeah, it's the the guy from uh, French Dispatch. Not French Dispatch, French Dispatch, Grand Budapest Hotel, whatever. They're all the same. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, he was. He reminded me very much of the vibe of Tobey Maguire movies. Yeah. Not of anything I want to see. So he might become Venom at some point. Oh, how lame would that be? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I don't want to see that actor in this movie ever again. <laughs> He's in all three of the Tom Holland ones. I know. It's just such a different type of acting than the rest I, I of the don't movie. I don't love him either I, I mean I've it, if if I could remove anybody from these it'd probably be that character um, or happy I'm fine with happy, I'm fine with happy yeah. I, I like that happy's a link to the rest of the universe without having to have Iron Man take up screen time or you know, some other character because um, I hate when they make these movies with like not hate I dislike when <laughs> They make these movies that have one character and then it and then they end up sharing tons of screen time with a bunch of other people that don't matter. Um, I guess that kind of happened in this movie, but I was all right with it. Um yeah, I, I think I agree that this is the end of Tom Hardy Venom in this movie, but I do love that uh MCU Marvel, Disney Marvel was like, Hey, if we're gonna mine it, let's ask Sony if we could throw tom hardy venom at the end yeah and we'll we'll fight we'll figure out a way to separate him so that he's not really in our universe because they've said that he's not in our universe and like you know they they constantly got asked before the first venom movie came out if whether it was going to weave in and they were like it'll be separate it'll be separate it'll be separate and then he shows up in this and i also think they've subtly as they're i feel like they're laying the groundwork for the the movie that is trailered at the very end credits, the like multiverse oh. of madness yeah, type stuff. They're too. they're subtly introducing audiences to the uh, to all of these concepts, and I think they're just going to go nuts with it in multiverse of madness. But um, they're also kind of saying that any other iteration of a Marvel character exists, and you don't have to decide whether the Fox X Men actually exist compared to what will eventually be the x-men in the mcu uh -huh. like at any time we can go get those characters from those x-men movies and put them in our universe all bets are off <laughs> kind of thing is what they've said with this multiverse stuff um and i i don't think they'll do that with uh tom hardy venom but i mean if venom's popular enough maybe they would i don't know the Venom movies aren't great, but they make money. So who knows? They do. Yeah. I don't think a Venom movie can work unless they actually make a Venom movie that follows the comic book. Uh, and so far, they haven't been able to do that. So, so you kind of mentioned that end, end credit scene at the very end. Mm -hmm. And I was disappointed by that because that was a trailer. It was absolutely a trailer. It was, it was yeah. not, yeah, it, it wasn't like a stinger scene. It wasn't a joke. It wasn't like a, 
a hint to what's going to happen next. It was a trailer minus like next summer, but it even had the Doctor Strange will return. And I was kind of, I was kind of mad that I sat through the credits to watch a trailer. <laughs> Why? At the end. Because Why? because it didn't it didn't seem worthy of sitting through ten minutes of credits just to get like a bunch of clips of a movie that's gonna gonna happen next time. What like, you hate people that work on movies? You don't want to watch the credits and like appreciate all the artisans <laughs> that crafted this fine piece. No, of and, and and I read each and every single one as they roll by, <laughs> waiting for that. But like I usually at the end, either either you're getting like a joke. Right, which we kind of mm-hmm. got with, with the mid credit scene, which is fine. Um, or you're getting a link to the next movie, and it could be, you know, nebulous. We're not sure who that is. It could be like a face showing up. We got the Nick Fury thing, but in this case, we just got scenes from the next Doctor Strange movie, but like like in trailer form, just like cuts and fades to black, and the the music was there, and I just was like. I don't know. It, it didn't add anything to me. Like it, it was, I could have watched that on YouTube and it didn't add, it didn't add to this movie whatsoever. It was just literally setting up what's happening next without any tie back into it. It seemed unnecessary and I didn't care for it. I have to say, I do not understand this opinion. Um, <laughs> because, Cause if they had shown like three clips from that trailer it would have been a perfectly normal stinger at the end of a movie right they just gave you a lot more than that you know what i mean like I, I people guess... went to movie theaters strictly to see star wars trailers and then they didn't care about the movies that they were attached to like yeah but it's an event to see a trailer for a movie that comes out six months from now you know but okay well, well hold on so <laughs> the, the next doctor strange movie is not the first Star Wars movie in 25 years. Like, yes, people went to go see like Notting Hill or whatever it was just to go to see the Star Wars trailer. You, you can't compare the two. Like, and this just wasn't. Did. Okay. But it's a bad comparison. <laughs> you, you did, no, but no, it's no a I'm just saying if, if they showed a, a fraction of what they showed, it would be a perfectly normal and exciting stinger. They just gave you a lot more than you asked for. But so it didn't tell like i guess usually the stingers tell a story even if it's a 10 second story and this didn't tell a story it was just scenes and it scenes did. and scenes no there's no it story absolutely told, just... it told it okay. set up the plot of the next doctor strange movie when that you, was the story when you watch a, a trailer you're like wow that was a great story i thank you that that really gave me a, a beginning middle end no <laughs> it set up a story for sure it set up doctor strange and this like uh, parallel thing and an evil Doctor Strange showing up and like all of that was it wasn't just a montage of of colors it was a montage it's a okay if it they wasn't had, colors and sound effects you know what I mean like it you saw recognizable things there was a a tentacle monster yeah but again it it, it gave you so I don't go like I don't need I don't like watching trailers because it gives you just like more information than I need because I want to enjoy the movie for what it is. If they had given me Doctor Strange in his whatever that, you know, house is, and then like Evil Strange walks in and you're like, oh, wow, they you know, have exchange words. And then it's, you know, Doctor Strange will return. I'm like, OK, great, cool. We're setting up the next movie. We know there's an evil Doctor Strange showing up. I wonder what's going to happen. But instead, I'm getting like clips of this and a tentacle monster and fighting and blah blah blah, blah. and I just I don't know I I didn't wait, I wait. didn't want to watch a trailer at the end of this movie. But what you're saying is you like regretted staying through the credits, but you wouldn't have regretted it if you just if it was a clip of Doctor Strange, evil Doctor Strange coming in, and you're like, oh, now there's going to be an evil Doctor Strange. Like for, for some reason, yes, getting a 10 second clip is more worthy of sitting through the credits than getting a 30 second trailer. Because the 10 second clip is that is like a someone making the decision. Okay, here is something we think will get people excited for the next movie. And the 30 second trailer is like, I don't want to do with this. Just give them 30 seconds of clips and hope they like it. It's it was lazy. It was lazy to me. Like they, they couldn't make up their minds. So they gave us everything. No, I thought it was okay. We know desserts coming. We're going to wait for the dessert. And then, whoa. We didn't realize the dessert was going to be this good. <laughs> that, we that was not it was a good dessert. Gonna, that was a. We thought you were going to give us a cookie, and you gave us a four course dessert. That, that was we not a four course for. dessert. Instead of giving me a good, like 
well-made cookie. You gave me a platter of store-bought cookies. And you're like, I hope you like one of these. Instead of like, here's a cookie I made for you. Instead, it's like, here's a cookie someone's going to like in this group. No. People were expecting to get a crumb of what the movie, the next movie was going to be, right? We're going to get a tiny little taste and it's going to like satiate us for a little bit until Doctor Strange gets closer. And instead of getting a crumb, they got an actual plate of dessert. It, yeah, but it, I would rather have a crumb of a good chocolate chip cookie than a plate of store-bought sandwich cookies. What was wrong with Oreo, that trailer? I, I'm talking like the, those cheap ones that are like brown and yellow and pink. What was wrong with that trailer? Why was that trailer uh, cheap store-bought cookies? Because it, it didn't... There was no... Uh, I don't know. It, 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 it felt lazy because Why? they... Because... What I expect from I, 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 I now we're talking in circles here. James, you could jump in. What what we've been given for stingers for fifteen years of MCU now is here's a little crumb, here's a little stinger, here's a little something to get you excited for the next one. Not here's just a bunch of scenes from the next movie. Like the last time I saw so, this, oh don't 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 don't, don't, don't forget. Last time I saw this was at the end of Back to the Future Two where then they put the trailer of Back to the Future 3 at the end of Back to the Future 2. You which, didn't see... Um, that was uh, awesome. You didn't it, see it Matrix was awesome 2 in, in the movie theater? Eighty whatever uh, 89. Um, Matrix 2 had a trailer at the end. Of did it for Matrix? For, okay, I don't for, remember that. I did see Matrix 2 in the, in the theater. Revolutions. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying it was lazy for them to not do what they've done every other time and to do something different. Than they Here's done. the thing. It was a bad different though. Like it, 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 it didn't work for me. Go ahead, James. Here's the thing. There's three types of things that Marvel has put at the end of the credits. Okay. Okay. They've put goofy scenes that have nothing to do with the movie that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Just like they'll a sandwich do, joke. They'll do scenes that are not goofy that do have an implication for an upcoming movie, but they rarely even hint at what that movie is going to be. And they also at the end of the end credits, have occasionally played a trailer. This is not the first time Give that's happened. Give me another time that Marvel has done this. <laughs> it happened uh, at the end of Infinity War. It happened. What? It happened. What? No, no, no. What, what trailer? Endgame. They filmed Endgame and Infinity War at the same time, and they had an Endgame trailer at the end of Infinity War. Really? Yes, absolutely. So if I hop on Disney Those Plus right now. Infamously lazy movies. <laughs> Yeah, there no, was. A, I, 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 I'm not saying that that the movie is going to be lazy. I'm saying that throwing a trailer at the end was lazy. I'm pretty sure either Civil War had a trailer for whatever came after Civil War, or something had a trailer for Civil War right before it. But somehow Civil War has okay. a trailer at the end of a movie, has a trailer at the end of its movie, or it has a trailer of it at the end of somebody else's movie. Um, yeah, it's happened. It doesn't happen often. Compared to the other two situations, but it has happened. Well, uh, uh, let's just, let's just let's just say this. Uh, didn't bother me at all. Okay, I do think it would have been more fun because eventually I'll get to see a Doctor Strange trailer, and I don't care about Doctor Strange or seeing trailers. Uh, so it would have been more bang for my buck if it had been something other than that. But I was not upset about it. <laughs> it seems like Kyle might have been. <laughs> you were, he was upset. He left with a sour taste. It did. It it, it turned me off. Okay, wait. So. Doesn't it start with does does the stinger start with him going to Wanda, right? Him going to Wanda, Doctor Strange. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it does. Is yeah, yeah. is in the apple? He's in like the whatever the the tree field, <laughs> the orchard, orchard. <laughs> Thank you. The tree field. <laughs> I think what it's called. <laughs> he's in the orchard. <laughs> he finds Wanda. Please, can we call it a tree field? Yeah. Okay. So he's in the tree field. <laughs> he, he finds Wanda. Like in you know the Wanda's like oh I'm sorry about the whatever whatever happened to WandaVision, and he goes do you know about the multiverse and she's like oh yeah and he he says I need you to come along I'm really good at summarizing things if you can't tell though I'm mumbling yeah <laughs> right and then I thought oh perfect okay cool we're bringing WandaVision back in and then a trailer starts and I think that's what bothered me I think just that scene with Wanda would have been totally fine that's all I needed and hold on then so this just whole to clarify starts. Just yeah. to clarify, mm -hmm. you're saying they gave you what you wanted with that stinger, something they would have done without the trailer, right? Yeah. And then adding the trailer on top of that makes it lazy. It was it was unnecessary, and it was 
not trusting the audience is going to care. So they're like, it, it, instead of saying, like, we, if we give them Wanda and we give them Strange and they're talking about the multiverse, you know, that should make people care. And then someone's like, I don't think that'll make people care. Throw a trailer on the end. But so they absolutely could have stopped it. Yeah. In after that scene. It would have been fine. I just my I just cannot understand how it was then a lazy decision to then add a trailer after that. It was unnecessary to add that trailer. It didn't add anything. It just I don't know. It, it, it again, it's it's lazy because you're not trusting whoever filmed that scene. Obviously, that scene was filmed different. Like that was was filmed as a stinger. That's what it looked like to me. It's not a scene from the upcoming Doctor Strange movie. It seemed like it was filmed specifically for this moment. And then they put a trailer on the end, which felt like out of place. So either someone saw that stinger and thought, well, that's not going to work. Let's throw a trailer on. Or I don't know what the thing, the thought behind that was. So the thought behind it was let's give people more than they asked for. They, they were expecting a stinger and that we're going to give them a whole trailer. Yeah, you know what I mean. So excited. The next version of that is we're gonna give them the first five minutes of the movie. You yeah, know what exactly. I mean? like, That's what's gonna, it's it's like you get to the end of like a Game of Thrones book, and then they said, "Here's the next chapter from the next book," and you're like, "Why? I'm gonna read it anyway." <laughs> not not anymore. I'm not going to. So. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is a very That's long funny. conversation on this, but this if, is, for whatever reason, it bugged me. This is quite a hot take on something that really doesn't matter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Run. It's. I understand. I have hot takes on like innocuous things but <laughs> Kyle to protect yourself in the future just you shouldn't stay to the end of the trailers in case they accidentally show you <laughs> more than <laughs> what you wanted to see no what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch it and then once the trailer starts I'm going to cover my ears close my eyes and scream running out of that theater <laughs> yelling where's the bathroom as I go yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's probably why you were annoyed no I was good like you know this <laughs> That 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 mid movie bathroom break, I was all set for the rest of the movie. Yeah. All right, let's wrap this up, guys. <laughs> okay, let's before we do, let's quick rank the Spider Man. Oh movies. yeah. Okay. All right. I'll go first. Uh, this there's nine movies I've seen all nine. My number nine is Far From Home, which is uh the second uh Tom Holland Spider Man movie. Don't love that movie. Uh, next is Amazing Spider Man Two. Don't love that one either. Andrew Garfield's great in it, but I don't like the villains or plot mechanics. Uh, number seven, Amazing Spider-Man. Again, not great movies with Tom Holland in them. Uh, he's good in it. Spider-Man colon Homecoming in, in at number six. Uh, Spider-Man three in at number five. My least favorite Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Number four, Spider-Man colon No Way Home, the movie that we just watched. Ranks kind of high. Amongst nine Spider-Man movies. Uh, number three, Spider-Man, the original, which I still think is very good as a Spider-Man movie and as a Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi movie. Number two, uh, speaking of which, I just learned, because I was looking at Wikipedia, that the director of Doctor Strange in the Universe of Multi-Madness, or whatever it's called, directed by Sam Raimi. Yeah. See, if you put that in your stupid trailer at the end, I would have been more excited. <laughs> Yeah, really. <laughs> they, they, that would have been it, lazy this, to tell you extra things. This would have been the audience to say that. It, like it directed is. by Sam Raimi, director of Spider-Man 1 and 2. Exactly. <laughs> you can just leave out 3. Um Yeah, the next 3 Marvel movies, Sam Raimi, Taika Waititi, Ryan Coogler. That's a strong lineup. Uh, hopefully three bangers from here on out, for sure. Uh okay, getting back to my list. My number two, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. My second favorite Spider-Man movie of all time. I've now seen it twice, once in the theater, once at home. And uh, can't wait to see it again as soon as I can forget some of the details. So it won't be <laughs> such a fresh rewatch. My favorite Spider-Man movie of all time is obviously the best Spider-Man movie of all time, Spider-Man 2. Okay, you're going to love my list. Oh, I my God. I uh, I don't think you've ever heard a ranking like this before. Um, I'm just going off a of letterbox and what I rated these movies. Okay. Um, my least favorite Spider-Man three, uh, the Tobey Maguire, uh, third film. Uh, my second least favorite is Spider-Man, the original Tobey Maguire film. <laughs> uh, the next is Spider-Man two, the Tobey Maguire film. 
ridiculous. Um, Spider-Man 2, my favorite of the original uh, three. If you need to uh, revisit those movies. I will. I plan to. Uh, next is Spider-Man Far From Home. Um, I didn't care for that movie that much. Uh, then is Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> then is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, is my number three. My number sure. two is uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. And my number one is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Wait, where was Amazing Spider-Man in your list? I have not seen The Amazing Spider-Man. You've only seen Amazing Spider-Man 2? Yeah. Oh. What? <laughs> I mean, I've only yeah. seen Amazing Spider-Man. But... What is wrong with you? See Amazing Spider-Man. I would if love you like to. Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, you know, I would love I it. don't like Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. That way. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's, for some reason, it makes me feel ridiculous for saying that when you're the ridiculous one. <laughs> no, James, I am trying to agree with you, and uh, uh, I would love to see that movie. I think I enjoy it quite a bit. Well, if only it was available to you. I don't, I'm <laughs> only... sorry you've been denied it so long. <laughs> That famously lost movie from 2012. <laughs> James, if I could borrow the Blu-ray, I'd be happy to watch it. Absolutely. I'll give you it. Oh, I, okay. I, you, if you. that will get you to watch it. <laughs> I've got Dave's 4K copy. I'll just send it to you. Okay. I don't send, think Dave send me Dave's. The, yeah. Dave, if you're listening, it's in Florida. <laughs> all right. Um, I've only seen eight also. I've not seen Amazing Spider-Man 2. So my ranking is number eight, Spider-Man 3. From Sam Raimi, this is my least favorite, favorite Spider-Man movie. Number seven, Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, it's such a retread of what happens with the Tommy Maguire ones. It doesn't really justify its existence much for me. Uh, number six, Spider-Man Far From Home. Number five, Homecoming. Number four, the... Oh, sorry, number four, Away From Home, the one we just watched. No Way Home? No Way Home, thank you. <laughs> and I'll, I'll admit, I haven't seen uh, the other Spider-Mans from uh, Sam Raimi in a long time, so I'm, it's, I'm just kind of going off of my gut here. My number I th- really hope, sorry, I really hope they drop all the home stuff for the next trilogy. Like, it's done, it, please. It, they did it no with Homecoming, home. and they're like, we're really clever <sighs> with Homecoming. Let's keep going. It's the home trilogy. Yeah. No, it's stupid. Just get rid of it. Uh, so They did it with Back to the Future. Yeah, they but, all had Back to the Future in the title. Yeah, one, two, and three. It, it wasn't like Back to the Future and then the future is back. And then the third one is like, we're going yeah, it's not like from fast the future the back to the past. Like, like right. No Way Home doesn't even make sense. Like Homecoming made sense. Far From Home like fly, okay, it in, took place in Europe. Yeah. But No Way Home doesn't even make sense. They're just trying to find a way to sleep. No, there, there is a way home. Press the magic box. Boom. Home. Who's trying to get home? The villains. And they don't even want to get home. Nobody wants to get home in this movie. It should be called sending other people home. (laughs) If you really Tom Holland can never go home again. Because home's not there anymore. He can never go home again. He can't go. Aunt May's gone. Yeah. That's his home. He could go back to where Aunt May lived. No, his home is not a his home is not a building. Peter Parker doesn't exist. He can't walk into his apartment and say, hi, I'm Peter Parker. This is my Aunt May. So like, what are you talking about? Aunt yeah. May had no next of kin. That's yeah, that is no, I unacceptable. Home is where the heart is, James. And where's where's his heart with Zendaya? It's crushed. It's crushed. No, it's still it's not crushed. He's not crushed at the end of the movie. He he walks out smiling. We Oh, yeah, he's he's happy go lucky. He just he lost he's his not best crushed. friend. His girlfriend and his only surviving family member. I I admit he's had some personal setbacks, but (laughs) (laughs) he's happy with the condition of what's happening when he leaves. Spider Man chooses that condition. Personal setbacks. Yeah. See, he's there trying, you go. He's trying to open when you're a unencumbered with the with having the word home in there, you can come up with something creative like personal. Doesn't setbacks. have a social security <laughs> number. Can't get Spider Man colon personal setbacks. It, yeah, <laughs> right. it's it's really him just trying to like navigate the bureaucracy of American government without yeah you know, existing. All right. Anyway, exactly. Kyle, your number three. <laughs> number three is the Sam Raimi Spider Man, the original. My number two is Sam Raimi Spider Man two. And my number one is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Nice. So the one that we agree on the most is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which makes sense. Yeah. The, James, you and I have had a very similar list. 
Yeah. I think we ranked the um, Tom Holland Spider Man movies similarly. Uh, Zach, I don't know what planet you come from. We all ranked the <laughs> um, Tobey Maguire movies the same, just in yeah. in, in the same places. order. The same just, order. Yeah. Yep. They're high on my list. Although, uh, Kyle, I think Spider Man 3 was at the bottom of your list. Yes, because it's that is like Amazing Spider Man is a, it's not a bad movie. It just was such a, I don't know. No, wait, Amazing Spider Man's at the bottom of your list or Spider Man? Spider Man 3, 3 is about my list because that's a bad movie. Spider Man 3 is not a bad movie. Yes, it is. It, it's a bad no. movie. <laughs> it's not. Amazing Spider Man's not a bad movie. It's just an unnecessary movie. It's not the best movie, but it's not a bad movie. Spider Man 3 right. is a bad movie. All right, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that was our Spider Man centric episode. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. Uh, as much as we enjoyed recording it. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I thank you for listening. <laughs> I did too. Thank you for listening to this episode 509 of The Cine Realist. Don't forget, check out the video version on YouTube, support us on Patreon, leave us an Apple podcast review, or send us a listener email. Uh, do any of those kinds of things. You could also follow us on uh, social media, including Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and now TikTok at Cinerealis. Or you could uh, follow me on my personal Twitter or Letterboxd account at Yo JRB. You can follow me on Twitter or Letterboxd at Shobin. You can find me on Letterboxd at Peter SKB. We will be back next week with a review of Matrix Resurrection, which is the fourth Matrix movie. It'll be in theaters and on HBO Max. So check it out. Give it a little pre-watch. We'll see you guys back here. Same time, same channel. Until then, keep it Cinereal. still here? It's over. Go home. Go.